online, here on FM, sounds and digital, it's Open All Nights. Football from Sports Sound. Brilliant drop of the shoulder! From BBC Radio Scotland. There's no substitute. Welcome to Open All Mics on BBC Radio Scotland. A reminder that Sports Town will run till 7 o'clock now every Saturday. We've got some great things lined up for you uh, later in the afternoon. Uh, fan involvement's going to be a key part of that. Also some other elements that I'm sure you will enjoy. So stay tuned, stay with us on Sports Sound right through until 7 o'clock this evening. We've been round... Uh, the five games in the top flight this afternoon. Tomorrow, full coverage of Ross County against Celtic. Last night uh, in the Championship, what a win for our both. 2-0 at home to Air United. Four games in the Championship this afternoon. Wraith Rovers are at home to Queen's Park. Let's get then to our reporter there, Amy Canavan. Good afternoon, Amy. Good afternoon, Kenny. Yes, Wraith Rovers, they have the ideal opportunity to put their Challenge Cup disappointment behind them by denting the title hopes of league leaders Queen's Park, who are just entering the park. What time? And they are hoping, well, Wraith Rovers are at least hoping to throw another spanner in the works of this incredible championship title race, as you were just alluding to there. Aidan Connolly netted a brace back in November when the sides last met here in that 5-2 game. I was here. He's back in the starting 11 this afternoon with Scott McGill, the only other change from last week in Queen's Park. They suffered a shock defeat last weekend against Arbrook, who, of course, as you say, backed it up brilliantly last night by defeating Air 2. Owen Coyle's side are four points clear of Dundee at the top of the table, and he welcomes back Jack Thompson, Josh McPeak and Lee Caldea at the back. The referee at a bitterly cold start park is Grant Irvin. Thank you to Amy Canavan. Dundee are at home to Hamilton Arcades this afternoon there for us. Kenny Crawford. Yeah, Kenny, it's t- t- title chasers against relegation. Team Al- Hamilton Arcades are trying to avoid the drop. It's a massive game in this title race. Amy referred to the championship title race. It is a massive not a sprint and all sorts of uh, all through this season Dundee have been in the periphery of that title race they've been behind Air United for a while they've been behind Queen's Park for a while and now you just wonder are they going to break out and make that final dash for the line on this home straight they're four points behind Queen's Park they've got a game in hand they're on a good run of form they've taken seven points from the last nine available and have only conceded once in their last three games. Hamilton Aki's though trying to chase survival as I mentioned, they're buoyed by a Challenge Cup win last week, their first cup success in 30 years a young team though, six players aged 21 or under in this starting 11 for John Rankin's side, really intriguing game ahead, Dundee unchanged from the win against their United about 10 days ago Hamilton Aki's make five changes from that Challenge Cup win because of suspensions and injuries. It's about to kick off here at Dens Park. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, An early result from the English Premier League. Manchester City thumping Liverpool by four goals to one. Very much game on in terms of that battle for the title between City and Arsenal. Uh, Rory Loy in the studio with me this afternoon. We heard from the the two reporters here at the Championship. What a win that was for a broth last night, Rory. You feel there's real momentum behind them. Hamilton Aki's in the back of that cup success. The one I think you fear for now, although it changes quickly in the championship, Cove Rangers. Yes, I think the worry from Cove Rangers' point of view is is probably the manner in which they're getting beaten. Yeah, and they're getting beaten by several goals, you know, far too regularly. Um, I've worked with Paul Hartley before. Oh, it's um, a handball! I look like a handball, Kenny. Right back across. It's a great ball. Yep. Yeah, it's a ball from Strain. There's a little flick on, certainly hits the, the hand of a yellow Livingston jersey, I'm not too sure. Uh, referee b- beating him, he was right there, he's, he's 10 yards from it, clear view, that's got to go to a review, surely. We'll Have just it. get a yellow card. It's a fly start, Hiro Hara just picked up a yellow card, but that was a, certainly was a handball, and it stops the ball going across the face of the goal, so to me, they've got to review that, that's a... a I think that's a penalty kick. I've not seen Going a with what's went on so far this season. I've not seen a rerun of it just yet. Uh, no surprise that it. Oh, let me have a wee look here. It's a flying start as well, you know. It, it certainly hits the hand. It's, the ball's going to cross the face of the goal in the six-yard box. 
Yeah, we're getting a close up now, Derek. We're getting a close up now. Oh! What do, you, what do you think, Rory? He's taking his hand away, but it does hit him. It, it hits his arm, and for me, I, I've got to agree with Derek. Um, his arm's outstretched. Um, it hits the centre of his arm. It looks like the joint in the elbow, um, from what I can see. And I see no reason as to why that, that wouldn't be a penalty kick. Um, that's for sure. A couple of big chances here for the home side uh, in Perth. Uh, it was Liam Gordon with the first volley. Great save by Kel Roos. And then he could only pat it out. Very tight angle for... Uh, Andy Considine, who drilled it at Roos, who took it um, again. Very good goalkeeping, narrow in the angle. So the home side have started with a flurry. Two very good chances early on. Yeah, very good for St Johnson there at home to Aberdeen. Uh, Willie across all the action in that game. Barry Robson, as we discussed, confirmed as manager until the end of the season. Another replay coming in here. This one, Rory, John yeah. beating the referee there at St Martin Park. I, I, I think he misjudges the ball and, and he panics slightly. And, you know, his arm's outstretched. Um, Stephen Thompson has just che texted the group chat to say it's a pen all yeah. day, however... <laughs> Um, given that it's a penalty Clearly for Clearly hits his, his arm. It's the direction of the ball where it's going. Yeah. It's going across oh, the face of the goal. Oh, here's one. You know, We've got a sure penalty. We've right, well, got a penalty here for Aberdeen. The Mayovsky, it was Shinny that put him through. Could it be a, a goal-scoring opportunity? It was a great angle pass from uh, Shinny. Mayovsky's going through. There's a little tug on him. Yeah. It might be outside the box. It's right on the line if it's not, but the referee has given a penalty. Well, there was certainly no attempt to play the ball, so nope. if the referee calling Stephen feels that that's a foul, then I would see no option other than a red card, but I would need to see it again to see how much contact there is, Willie. Can you check if it's outside the box or inside the box? Yeah, we're just going now. getting a little rerun of it just now. Uh, it's out, outside the box yes. for me, Willie. The initial yes. contact is outside the box. I know if it continues inside the box, mm. ah, it's one of those, it's difficult to say. It's, yeah. it's so, so close. Can um, it yeah, Derek, yeah. I mean, why on earth has it taken so no, long Kenny, for John Beaton to be this called is what over? Kills me. This is what kills me, Kenny, about the game, because it's got off to an absolute flying start. The, the player's pumped up. This is taking an eternity. You know, I'm looking round about me. You know, you know where I'm sitting. Yep. He's going to look at the monitor, John Beaton. I, I think, the going by what's been on in the past, I think that you just have a look at that a couple of times, and then you make your decision. Well, I think it was a penalty, but John Beaton's come over, having a look. What I don't understand, Derek, as well, is say... Nod and he's hit. Yeah, on you go. They're, yeah. they're not meant to be influenced. So why is it taking so long? If they feel that oh. they need to look at it again, then just send them to the screen. Exactly, right away. And just, uh, just for the listeners, there's a slight delay in the line there to Derek. That's what we're That's talking penalty. over each other. Penalty kick. Yeah, all day long. Penalty kick that took, I don't know, three, four minutes. Yeah. That's, what, uh, that's what kills it for me. Who's decided you know, that then? Right, yeah, Colin, got Colin, the right Colin Stevens has got his hand to his ear. He's away. He's away to have a look at the screen. Right. He's been invited to go and what have a, a look. Start. I know. But, well, my initial instinct was the, the, the first contact was outside the box. Now, I know there's the argument there. If it continues to inside the box, it would still remain a penalty. But I think he gets his arm down in time. So it'll be interesting to see what the outcome is here. Uh, it was certainly a foul. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what Colin Stephen does. Who, who else is around? Is there any yeah. other defenders around? Because you would think that it's got to be a sending off. He's pulled oh, up. just about to run up. Right, you take call. it away, oh, Calm as you like. He's just been booked. But uh, kills a cucumber, just slots it away to the keeper's right hand side. Brilliant. He's but, tucked uh, away some really no, important uh, penalties this season, Mark. That's brilliant. He, he, so, so calm. You know, he just walks up to the ball, looks at the keeper, waits for the keeper actually to go. Keeper goes to his left, he goes to the right hand side. Cool as anything, but he's picked up a booking, so he's got to be There's careful. There's a chance now. he's the run. But, uh, oh! What a chance for Kevin Van Vini. He's not been flagged offside. And it's gone behind for a corner kick, I think. David, David Marshall comes up with a brilliant yes. save with his foot. Comes out, spreads himself big, but Van Veen <laughs> really should be scoring that and putting Motherwell in front. Just to answer your question from earlier, Michael, now, whether he's going to the screen to determine whether it's a foul or not, it's a clear foul. This no, should, no. Should Here be, he goes, hold on, hold on, hold on, card. hold on. I think he's going into his top pocket. Yeah. He's at the halfway line, his red card's out. Yeah. So the red card's going to be shown. It's Andrew Considine. No, is it? Andrew Considine. Well, happy birthday, Andrew. <laughs> he's 36 and he's going to get an early piece of cake when he goes into the dressing room. <laughs> got a few cards a day. It's, out, it's outside the box yeah. as well. Yeah. So, yes, 
Wow. But, so the, here's the thing, Dylan. though. Surely there was no debate about the red card. The only debate would have been, was it a penalty or no? Yeah, so well, how on earth does the referee no sent him off before this? Correct on both occasions. It was outside the box, in my <laughs> uh, view, up here at the back of the stand. The referee oh, was right on top goal. of it. For Dundee. What a goal, Sean Goss with a free kick. It wasn't a corner, it was a free kick that was given from the... The initial strike from Kevin Van Veen, it came back out, it was a free oh, kick, goal and Motherwell have just curled oh, it right into the top corner. 1 0 Easter Road to Motherwell. Right, goal Easter Road, Kenny Crawford. There's a goal here. Oh, Kelly, trick, is that you, Chick? Yes, yeah, a goal for Hearts is Lauren Shankland. Come on, it, give it away at the back. Dorset caught in possession. Shankland nipped it from him, came into the right side, and struck a low shot beyond Sam Walker. Magnificent finish by the heart strikers and a big heart support behind the goal go absolutely wild we have played seven minutes it's come on oh, real that's save. one brilliant and save. it's only taken Dundee seven minutes to go in front of here as well uh, Kenny at Dens Alex Jakubiak his eighth goal of the season brilliant work down the left hand side by uh, Jordan Marshall gave it to Zach Robinson he put it across the box and there was Jakubiak at the back post to Tap it in, past Ryan Fulton. Dundee 1, Hamilton Ackies now. Yeah, just to sum up those last few minutes, fantastic penalty by Michael, Mark O'Hara. I don't know what Stuart Kettlewell's been doing with the Motherwell, but that is a free kick to match Callum Slattery's from Rugby Park a couple of weeks ago from Sean Goss. Kisses the underside of the bar, as Michael says. Great finish after Van Veen should have put them 1-0 up before that. Lauren Shanklin's effort is in lasered into the bottom corner. Absolutely top finish from a striker. Well, high in confidence and up on form. What a crazy start to the day. How... Um, Colin Stephen doesn't <laughs> give him a red card I can forgive Colin Stephen for you know, being unsure whether it was inside the box or not but it's unforgivable that he doesn't just show the red card it doesn't make any sense to me and as for the decision it's at Mum taking so long like I said you cannot tell me that it's John Beaton and John Beaton alone making that decision no, that seemed to be an eternity. Alan Preston, you said so much on the line for the teams today, and so far they're delivering. Well, here's a chance, Pollock's clean through. He's got McGregor to beat, he's got to go inside the box. Oh, his wide does he not hit? He tries to pick out Fletcher at the back post, he just takes another step and he lets go with his right foot. It's a corner to Dundee United when it should have been a brilliant opportunity for them. Tavernier a couple of minutes ago had a great chance at a tight angle. Really good save by Birigiti, the United keeper. But that has been the best chance so far. You'll see it, Rory. Yep. He's running clean through. Why he doesn't hit it, I don't know. I can see why he gets sucked into maybe trying to square it. But Here's I, I... another chance. Oh! It's still inside the box. <laughs> Hibbs managed to get it clear there eventually. It was Egan Riley who got a really good block. It was Mandron who was on the edge of the box. It couldn't get out his feet. And then there was a ball in behind again. But I tell you what, Motherwell have started the game very, very brightly, even before the, the goal from Sean Goss. They've just been able to knock it about, and, you know, Rory was touching on it there. Um, Stuart Kettlewell's, yeah, look, results build confidence. There's no doubt about it. This is a much transformed uh, Motherwell side. They've, uh, they've got a clear system about them. Players are high in confidence. They're working their backsides off, but they're knocking about with a real bit of purpose as well. It's uh, been a bright start for them. Ali, I, I... Oh, chance! Oh, it's actually a great chance for Kamarnik. Like Jordan Jones has started this game in fire. He's on the left side, he switched across to the right, he, he cuts inside, puts a left put a shot across, uh, and, and it's Danny Armstrong who just comes in and puts it beyond the far post. Kelly should have equalised there, it's still 1-0 Hearts at Rugby Park. We spoke about Cove Rangers and their dreadful run in the Championship, they're behind early on to Partick Thistle. Scott Tiffany with a goal there on 11 minutes. Cove nil, Partick Thistle 1. What a crazy start to the day, Rory. Oh. Red R Rory, very... can I ask you, would you have squared it? I would, I would absolutely not have squared <laughs> no it. No chance. I can I, see why you get sucked, sucked into it, but see, uh, uh, you're at Ibrox, the bottom of the league, just put your laces through it, Alan. Exactly. You've got to hit it. I just think, uh, Alan, I've got a wee question for you. I mean, I think this is a nightmare fixture for the timing of it for Dundee United. He's got two weeks to work with his players, you know, new to the club. Do you spend all that time and effort on this fixture? for the two weeks and get your tactics in place for this particular fixture because everyone knows outside the outside when you play the old firm as a, a provincial club what you do is oh. you prepare completely different to, as you would against uh, any other oh. side so does he use the two weeks to prepare for games against well, the, those around him or his pre-match his pre-match interview he said they've got a lot of the younger boys over as well so that that may have helped there's a chance for hips oh good clearance from Paul McGinn it was Matthew Hope who got to the byline he cut it back 
I think it was Nisbet oh. or Campbell who was coming in on the six-yard box to tap it in, but Paul McGinn was able to scoop it away. It's gone behind for the corner kick to Hibbs. In England, uh, Brentford 1-0 up away to Brighton. Pontus Janssen with a goal on 10 minutes. Actually, right up to date with all the goal news. So let's then ground the grounds. Let's get to uh, McDermott Park. Willie Miller there. What a start uh, for the Dons. Dreadful uh, for St Johnson. Andy Considine sent off in six minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's been a really interesting game. It's uh, been end-to-end -end, uh, stuff. Uh, St Johnson, even although they're down to 10 men, they had an opportunity. Tight angle, Jack Rudden. Uh, trying to respond to Andrew Considine on his 36th birthday, would you believe? Getting himself sent oh! off. Um, there's no doubt it was a sending off. Um, it wasn't a penalty, and they just wasted that opportunity. And then um, Ramadani on a, a, oh! a breakaway hit the crossbar as well with a strike. So the fans are certainly getting their money's worth. Big crowd down from Aberdeen, obviously getting behind uh, that resurgence that uh, Barry Robson has brought to the club. But still nil nil. A chance Easter Road. Michael. Yeah, there was. It's another corner kick for Hibs here, but it was uh, the ball's come in. It's a way through harmlessly. Yeah, there was a uh, good bit of play. Josh Campbell got down the, the right hand side. He clipped it into the box, and uh, Kevin Nisbet got up above the defence and looked for a split second as if it was going to go over Liam Kelly, but he just managed to get a fingertip to, to put over for the for the for the corner kick. It's still one 0 to Motherwell. Kenny, there's a great chance for Dundee as well to make it 2-0. It was Luke McCown played through and he just tapped it wide of the far left post, but Dundee just look as if they've got great momentum at the moment as they lead Aki's 1-0. Kenny, I always want to ask Willie, he's talking about the fans there, what is the general consensus amongst the Aberdeen fans? Do they want Barry Robson to get the job or are they still un unconvinced? Um, I think they're, they're very happy and you, 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 you would uh, understand why they would be very happy, Michael. I, I think if the board gave them the job, I don't think there would be too many dissenting voices. Um, you know, but whether there's that huge surge uh, for them to get the job, I think they're a little bit, uh, as, I, as I was speaking about, maybe still a little bit unconvinced. Um, he's getting the opportunity, so he's got to take that opportunity. And he's got a great chance here, isn't he, with St Johnson going down uh, to 10 men. And then it's uh, Kelly at Pataudry, and then Ross County away, uh, finishing off with Rangers at home. So, you, you know, if he can look as though he's getting... It might be, as, as Kenny Miller says, it might be that he gets the job permanently before the end of the season. But I think the Aberdeen fans can understand why the board are taking a little bit uh, more time. Whether you agree with it or not, it's up for debate. But uh, that's what they've decided to do. He's certainly doing all right uh, in terms of uh, the addition that he's had so far. Well, the reason I was asking is because obviously depending on what the fans are wanting you yeah. know, they'd be making a bit of noise and if they're not then I suppose that allows the board that extra time feel but, like but they they've were, got the extra time yeah they were singing there was only one Barry Robson at the end of the game uh, against Hearts but you can understand why because yeah. Hearts have you know been so good this season and they've managed to close the gap and then they you, you know they take them and dismantle them really because it was a very very good performance uh, from the well, Dons. All right, well, right. um, <laughs> it was only three berries that time, uh, Alan. It's usually Aye. more than that. It was usually the five at Tynecastle. <laughs> Alan, Alan, give us in your assessment of where we are right now in this race for third spot. Are you still confident Hearts yeah, will get it? I am, yeah. I think that, you know, I, I touched on it earlier. They had two games against Celtic, which their old, Robbie's old firm record's very, very poor, and they've not won at Petordi since 2016. So there's nothing to to worry about there is a little thing to worry about but the drop in form of Petrodi was the bad one but by the sounds of things they might have been back on it today and if they can get three points today it's up to the rest to, to catch and I think I spoke to Wally about it. I think Aberdeen have got Rangers and Celtic to play three times be between now and the end of the season that's tough for them their away record's not great although Hearts have now got to go to Easter Road and then Hibs come to Tynecastle so it's all we play for the, the and, good Aberdeen, thing is, well, and Aberdeen go to Tynecastle post exactly, play fixture exactly go hold on number two and it's Ryan Sweeney bullet header from Luke Hannon's corner Dundee 2 Hamilton Ackies no yeah what a start uh, for the home side they have very much got Queen's Park in the sights at the top of the championship in League 2 Elgin City no Stirling Albion 1 Aaron Dunsmore in 15 minutes in the English Premier League Bournemouth no Fulham 1 Andreas Pereira there with a the goal on 16 minutes Alan Preston you were speaking before the game very interested to see how Jim Goodwin would approach this game given as Aberdeen manager how he approached games against Old Firm look at this, every time we look at the screen they seem to be very much in this game today yeah they are but they're defending at the edge of their box it's a flat five basically defending their box and Stephen Fletcher who's their 
top target man up front. He's, what, 30 yards from the 18-yard box, so they're really deep, but they're very compact just now. They're difficult to break down for Rangers. Rangers have had a few chances. Morelos had a header from a corner, and then Ryan Kent had a, a left-foot shot wide of the target. But United, and we said about that Paula effort, when they're not going to get many, but when they do, they're going to have to hit them. And there's a chance here for them going forward now, Barris, it just cleared that. But so far, Dundee United, they've got a really good shape, very compact, and Rangers are finding it difficult at the moment just to break it down. What's happening at Rugby Park? Chick Young, a terrific start for the wayside there. Absolutely, 1-0 ahead, of course, that goal from Lauren Shankland. Uh, they've created chances in the wake of that. I have to say that every time... Uh, Alan Forrest gets the ball, he's running at this command defence. Always thought he was an outstanding player at Erie United, he's been a great sign for Hearts. Come on over the occasional break and threatened uh, the goal. There was a chance uh, a few months ago uh, that Danny Armstrong put beyond the post. Uh, they've, been a good, they've been a fair percentage of the play, clearly. In fact, they're inside the box here. Hearts deal with that at the back again. Good game, we've played uh, 17, just over 17 minutes, Kenny. Still 1 0 to Hearts, but entertaining stuff. Oh! Oh, what a save that is! It's McDonald uh, at the back post. Clarkson delivery is so accurate. Hits the big centre back. Uh, he gets a header down. It looks as though it's going to sneak in at the far post. And Remy Matthews manages to outstretch his left hand and get a little touch on it. Huge to chance. To put it round. It is, isn't it? Great save though. Yeah, good save. Good save indeed. It's, uh, I've been doing this long now that I, I can glance at a screen every time I hear a moan and a groan. I recognise them all. <laughs> um, it's gone a wee bit of quiet, thank God, after that start. Uh, a second goal uh, for Partick Thistle. Stephen Lawless has them 2 0 up away to Cove Rangers. As we said, there, uh, what a result that was uh, for our broth and their battle to beat the drop. That live on the BBC Scotland channel last night. Um, let's, then get to, let's, stay in the, let's get into the Championship again. Let's get to Amy oh, Cannon. Oh, it's a chance, that's a brilliant walk. Oh, what a goal. Class. He's in front of goal. You keep it. You think he's just going to smash it. But he shapes the shoot, just oh. takes it away, oh. eases it away right. from the keeper and just taps into the back of the net. It's been a, it's been a great game so far. Who? I was waiting you come to me, Kenny. Who scored? But, uh, <laughs> what team? Well, it was Tony Watt that has oh, scored. Right, okay. That's what I'm saying. The home side, they've, they've been fantastic. And I, I tell you, there's a real pace about the game, intensity, a physicality. I think everything that's good about Scottish football. But, uh, but it was a lovely finish because Tony Watt, you know, a lot of people, a lot of strikers tend to panic. Not Tony Watt. Kill as a cucumber. Like O'Hara with a penalty. Just despatched it uh, so coolly, but that was that was a wonderful bit of football for me. Yeah, brilliant. And Curtis, but, Curtis means vision oh, to pick out. another one, but it's disallowed for offside. Alex Jakubiak had headed in at the back post, but the linesman has his flag up, so it's still Dundee 2, Hamilton Aki's nil. Well, can I just ah. say, I mean, a few weeks back when Tony Asgar gave the interview with regards to strikers and them being none available and yes. not enough, you know, they, they've, they've sent Tony Watt to St Martin. He's just scored a goal of the highest quality, in my opinion. You've got Obika Motherwell doing a fantastic job um, on a weekly basis, although he's maybe not scoring all the time for Motherwell. And it just goes to show, if you can pick them out and get the best out of them, then it'll make a huge difference. Peter Paula has just sat down on the turf at Ibrox, unfortunately for him. He's had a dreadful he time has, uh, injury, hasn't he? Uh, uh, the game a couple of weeks ago against St Mirren, he was excellent, and Jim Goodwin, you know, he said, we'll get to half-time and we'll see how he, how he does. He lasted about 15, 20 minutes. He was excellent a few weeks ago, but no Ken one near him today, and he just sat down. Kenny, he's, he's had a dreadful career with injuries. Yeah. That goes back to his development days at Aberdeen as well. He always seemed to pick up you know, his train injuries, uh, you know, whether it's calf or, or, or groin or hamstring, he's had a career full of uh, uh, disappointments and that, uh, uh, yeah. y you know, concerning injuries, that is. Seems to be his, I think it's his knee, seems to be the oh, penalty. Like, yep. That's a penalty. Ah, come on, it's great build up by Kelly in the play. They have a racket, rocket shot. McKenzie's involved in the build up. The goalkeeper comes out, he spills it a little bit, goes into. The Kilmarnock, one of the Kilmarnock players down there. Anyway, it's a penalty right away. Definitely it strikes against... Uh, it's, a, it's Kyle Vassell who goes in for it. And Kilmarnock have the opportunity to equalise. 20 minutes on the clock. Penalty. Kilmarnock, little debate about who's taking this. Jordan Jones is fancying it, but I think he's going to give way. Uh, and we, the goalkeeper... You have to say, uh, it's a, it's a huge... Still have an argument. Well, it's a huge fumble from Gone Clark. He should, he should catch the initial, initial one. I mean, he's pleading his innocence, and I, I can't really understand for the life of me why 
it's a penalty kick all day long. Um, he, he doesn't hold on to the first initial shot, which he should do, which is not like him. Vassell's in, nips it round him. I don't think Vassell's going to score by going round him, but it's without shadow of a doubt a penalty kick. Uh, Rory McAllister has scored Rory, for Montrose, one nil up away to FC Edmund. Yes, Chick? Yeah, Danny Armstrong's going to take the penalty kick. It was a little chat with Jordan Jones. Uh, of course... Sander Clark just milking this, trying to put him off a little bit. The referee's getting a word oh, in his ear, oh, but I think there's no oh, doubt, as oh, uh, Rory has said, this is a penalty kick. Oh, Take look at push there. Over it. Right. Will he, will he so push So we're checking for offside. We're checking. We're checking for offside here, Ken. It's cleared, I think. The penalty will be awarded. And right. it's Daniel Armstrong to take it. Long run. The Hearts player's still no, they're protesting. Not checking it. They're trying yeah. to put Armstrong off. It's been checked, it's okay. I'm sorry you thought about <laughs> It's going to be Armstrong, he's taking an absolute age over this. <laughs> Goalkeeper on the line, hands outstretched. This is in front of the Hearts fans. Here comes Armstrong, left footed! Goal! Ooh. Danny Armstrong makes it one each at Rugby Park. 21 minutes gone, and come on at a level. That's a big, big goal for the home side there. Of course, they're a lie in their very strong home form. They'll need that if they're to avoid the drop. Uh, this season, some quick-fire goals. Uh, Brighton had equalised Matoma uh, at home to Brentford, but just a couple of minutes later, even Tony has Brentford back in front there by two goals to one. As I said, Rory McAllister has Montrose 1-0 up away to Edinburgh. What, what actually happened in your game there, Willie? Well, it was Stevie May. Liam Scales, he, he pushed him in the box. Uh, there was definitely contact uh, with, with uh, both hands, in my opinion. Yeah, there was, Willie, uh, yeah. Yeah, but nothing was checked. You know, it wasn't checked. He gave over. I was trying to um, uh, talk about it was it was my game here, but uh, it looked as though Rory, you saw it, I did you? I, I think it might split opinion this one, yeah, if I'm being yeah, honest, Willie, because yeah. another thing I would say about the incident is Liam Scales actually glances at Stevie May, uh -huh. um, but. Uh, I don't think there's enough in it for okay. it to be a penalty kick. Yeah, there is yeah. contact, both arms are up, but Stevie May, for me, as much runs into Liam Scales as Liam Scales pushes him, I, I just don't think there's enough in it for it to be a penalty kick. Okay. Right, I'm going to have a quick go at this, because no doubt goals will fly in, but I'll try and go through the latest scores for you across the country. So, Hibbs nil, Motherwell won that goal scored goal! by Sean Goss in seven goal, minutes. Goal. Yep. I'm only you up there. <laughs> Listen, it wouldn't surprise me because it's been an incredible start to the afternoon. It's been fantastic. We love it. So many oh. talking points. And they'll be discussed later. Chance Sports and the Here we go. Whoa. Have a look at this one, Rory. I think he does make a meal of it, Tillman. It's a shot from the edge of the box. The keeper should save it. Knocks it out. Tillman comes in. Tell you what, it's not dissimilar to the Xander Clark incident. I'll just need to have a wee look at it again. I've only seen it at full speed, Alan. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Just trying to look at this. So the referee, someone I presume will be speaking to him at the moment. Tillman not really protesting too much. Uh, see that. So it's Morales with the ball into the box. Saved. Should have held it. Oof, that's... What do you think, Rory? You don't sound convinced. No, it's... I don't. I don't think so, mate. I'm just seeing no, that. Can, no. Cantwell has a, a shot and the keeper's got to save it. He spills it. Tillman comes in, I think he's between I mean, two Dundee United defenders there. Uh, he does block his path in terms of where he dives, the goalkeeper, but it is a, a Tom Daly effort from um, from Tillman, I must say. <laughs> it's not For me, it's not a penalty kick. So um, it should be checked and no given? Well, I don't know if it'll be checked, to be honest. I don't even know if they'll check it. Yeah, well, so ever, ever, everything gets checked. Well, they, they still do the silent over, check. Yeah. I mean, you won't go over to the yeah. screen. The keeper should do better from Canton's yeah. shot. It's, it's a poor effort. Um, yeah, yeah no, I mean that, never, that. Never. No, it's, it's never. It's well, never. It should, well, it should be. He should be getting asked to go over to the screen and looking at it then. You know, that's what VAR is for. No, no. It's a silent check. No, and they'll confirm, it. they'll confirm that he's got the correct decision and it's not a penalty. Yeah, because the referee's not given in there, Michael. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I yeah. thought you were saying the penalty had been given. No, 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 no. Ah, right. No. Sorry. Right. Can't, can't well speak to him at right. the moment. The keeper should have done better. Sterling Albion 2 0 up now away at Elgin City. Dale Carrick with the second goal there on 26 minutes. So the top flight, Hibs nil, Motherwell 1, Sean Goss with the goal. Kamarna 1, Hearts 1, Shanklin with the opener in seven minutes. Danny Armstrong equalising from the penalty spot on 22. Rangers nil, Dundee United nil, St Johnson nil, Aberdeen nil. Saints down to 10 men. Andy Considine sent off on six minutes. What a start for St Mirren. 2-0 up at home to Livingston O'Hara from the penalty spot on five. Tony Watt, a really nice finish on 18 minutes. 
minutes into the championship. Cove Rangers nil, Partick Thistle two, Dundee two, Hamilton Aggies nil, Morton nil, Inverness nil, Wraith Rovers nil, Queen's Park nil, into League One. Alloa nil, Airdrie nil, Clyde nil, Falkirk nil, Dunfermline nil, Kelty Hearts nil, FC Edinburgh nil, Montrose one, Queen of the South nil, uh, Peterhead nil, and in League Two, Bonnyrae Groves nil, Stranraer nil, to Barton nil, Stennis Muir nil, East Fife nil, and an Athletic nil, Elgin City nil, Stirling Albion two, Forfar nil, Albion Rovers nil, and in England the full time result from lunchtime: Manchester City four, Liverpool one, Arsenal nil, Leeds nil, Bournemouth nil, Fulham one, Brighton one, Brentford two, Crystal Palace nil, Leicester City nil, Forest nil, Wolves nil, 5:30 kick off. Chelsea against Aston Villa. Just watching here, Barisic is still down. But yeah, he's Don, got a bad cut. Don Robertson's in deep conversation with, with James Tavenier, and you know Don Robertson signalled with his hand he felt he dived. Now whether he doesn't book him because he feels that he had to dive to get out the way, I'm not quite sure. But for me, it was a booking for simulation all day long. It's it, it was poor from. You did, that, that, I mean, that, that's I, I hear what you're saying, but that's bizarre. You didn't need to dive. You know, why not then just like. Did he get out of the way and get the penalty kick? Well, he would have, he would have, he would have run, he, he would have run full force into him, but I still don't think it would have been a penalty kick because the ball wasn't in the vicinity at that point. No, I mean I've not seen it, so I'd have to. But I mean, look, if he's dived, you know, then surely it is. It would be a yellow card. Yeah, absolutely. Aye. That's what I'm saying. Aye. And just to touch on Paul, is off injured and Kai Fotheringham has replaced him. But Barisic is still down, so there's going to be a fair oh. amount of time added on. So what about your game there at Easter Road? Quite lively, Michael? It's just, yeah, but it's uh, a wee uh, break and play. Kevin Nisbet went down and was getting a, a bit of treatment and um, all the, the, the games just stopped. The players had come over to the touchline, a lot of them, and were talking to the, the managers. It's uh, going to be a drop ball starting again uh, with Graham Granger, the, the, the referee. But yes, I mean, Hibs have come back into it in the last oh, 10 minutes oh, or oh, so. Oh, 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 there's a bad collision there. Not intentional, I've got to say. It's a good ball in from Tavernier. And it's Goldson on the keeper. The two of them come out and just collide. Totally accidental, thankfully. Two of them are going to get back onto their feet, it looks like. Yeah, two two players with their eyes on the ball going yep. for it, and it's just a coming together. You say, I'm good to see them both back up. Brighton has equalised at home to Brentford 2 2. Yes, take it away. Yeah, bad head knock here for Zach Robinson of Dundee. Um, it was Fergus Owens, a Hamilton Aki's defender, up and kind of looked as if he, he headed his kind of cheekbone. But Zach Robinson's so important for Dundee. Really good today at winning flick ons. Flick ons that are, don't just get them further up the pitch, but actually find dark blue bodies. It's a goal for Wraith Rovers. It looks like it's Tom Lang. I think it is it nipping in at the front post on the end of a corner. It has been coming for Wraith Rovers. They've been the better sign. They've been proving it is Tom Lang. He's celebrating Wraith 1-0 up against league leaders Queens. Yeah, my goodness, it's game on for the title there in the championship. Uh, Queens Park, that disappointing result against our growth uh, behind now against Wraith Rovers. And it's Kenny telling us, indeed, cruising oh, along to Hamilton Aki's. Yeah, Chuck. Oh, it's a ball put him in from... Oh, he hasn't got... That's incredible. So it's a ball put him in from the left-hand side. I think it's Jordan Jones gets it into an area. A hard head goes on it. I thought he was going to drop in his own goal because Sander Clark can come to get it. Uh, from my heart's point of view, they're really to say go over the crossbar. And they actually have... They'll give him a bye kick. I'm in, sure that came in, off a hard's head. Inexplicable. I have no idea how on earth they come to the conclusion that that is as a goal kick. Can I just ask Chick as well? Robbie Nielsen kind of hinted before the game that they would play a different kind of style as to what they have been playing and then spoke about the game being more direct at Rugby Park and things. Have, have they been more direct? Yeah, I would say, I mean, at, at the moment, I have to say that Alan Forrest, every time he's on the ball on the left-hand side, they've got three forwards operating at times. And, oh, and it's in! They really have been... It's a goal! It's a, it's a play. goal at Pitorgi, it's a corner kick for Johnny Hayes, I think it's Angus McDonald that gets in at the near post and he gets... The diving header on it and it squirms past Remy Matthews in goal and just creeps over the line to give Aberdeen the lead. That's one nil. So you're, at, you're at McDermott. Yeah. <laughs> and it's one nil. I'm, All right. not, I'm not a goalkeeping expert by any stretch, but I, I would have to have questions. I mean, that goes nearly in the middle of the goals from a corner kick. I don't know if he's gambled on whether he's just going to come out and try and collect the ball, but McDonald gets a goal after he should have had one earlier. And would you say that's game over, Willie? Well, you would think that uh, the odds would be in Aberdeen to take this one. I think that 
uh, St. Johnson have done well. Aberdeen played with the back five. They just changed it, so it was a good change of shape. They, they pushed Johnny Hayes a little bit forward. They went to four. For me. Oh, you've got to hit it. A brilliant play again from St Mirren and Maney's right and I thought it might have been offside I was looking at Douglas Ross there but not allowed it to go on and Maney's bearing in and goals he's got to put his laces through the ball I tell you what this St Mirren side you don't often see a Livingston side getting outworked you know and even physically they're, they're, they're coming up second best St Mirren they're, they're not letting them breathe they, they, they can't get oh, a moment Kevin Van they've Beans just in one after them. the keeper oh it's just past the post he managed to has he been flagged offside? I think. I don't know. They took a, they've taken a quick bye kick or or free kick for offside. But anyway, Van Veen was in straight ball over the top. He managed to get his toe on it. It slid past David Marshall and just past the post. Still one 0 to Motherwell. So just looking at the table, then the live table: Hearts third spot, 46 points; Aberdeen fourth spot, uh, 40. It hasn't updated. It's St Mirren for St Mirren up to fifth. Derek's in a really good performance from them this afternoon. 41 points, a point ahead of Hibbs. Livingston as things stand in seventh spot. Derek, I'd imagine Davy Martindale's going nuts in the touchline there. Do, do you know something? I was I was watching him the first 10, 15 minutes, and he was so calm, unlike. David, but he's came to life, uh, life over the last uh, five, ten minutes. I think because just what I've said, his team have been outworked. You don't often see that a Livingston side uh, like that. It's just, but Stevie Robinson side, they're just the the pace that they're going at, the physicality, uh, but the quality as well. And uh, Main and what up top, a real handful. Bacchus, Gogic in the middle of the park, winning all the second balls. They've been excellent. What is that? The first half hour, you know, and Main should have just, I say his earlier, should have gone in at the angle, just try to be too clever. He's trying to dink the keeper, you know, just put your foot through the ball, get the third, and that probably puts an end to the game. But uh, they've still got some work to do, but St Murn have been really impressive. 4 for so nil, Albion Rovers won. Joe Bevan with the goal there on 33 minutes. Yeah, yep, can I just say, I've seen that Aberdeen go back again, right? And I think Remy Matthews, he goes in the middle of the goals, I think he actually clears it with his hands, punches it against his own feet. And for me, I think that's possibly an own goal. And that, that, that's what it's come through as. It's come through on 30 think, minutes as a Remy Matthews own goal, yeah. I mean, just a horrific goalkeeping, I must say. What's happening at uh, Ibrox, Alan Preston? It's all Rangers with the possession, but not really cutting Dundee United. Open. Really good shape, United. Fletcher's a bit isolated up on his own, but the rest of them are defending manfully, making sure the distances between defenders is good, but Kent's starting to come into the game now. At the very start of the game, Ryan Kent was coming deep, and Michael Beale was out and pushing him right, telling him to get up, get up the park as much as he can and be on the ball. United shape really good so far, Kenny. Still no, no. We're 34 minutes in the clock. Big goal in England. Gabriel Jesus has given Arsenal a 1-0 lead at home to Leeds United uh, on 35 minutes after Manchester City kept up the pressure with a convincing home win against Liverpool in the lunchtime kickoff. Rodney, what are your thoughts? We had Michael Beale saying yesterday he's got a substantial budget. You're more than he can remember a recent Rangers manager having. What sort of What's required there? How big a change is needed to that squad to um, make it competitive with Celtic in terms of the title race? Well, adding in Cantwell and, and Raskin, you know, he was he was criticised heavily for his decision not to play them in the final. So I, I think the next three old firms with th they, those two in the team, if they're fit and available, will possibly determine just how much work's got to go into it. The goalkeeping situation, you know, needs resolved. I think if they keep Alan McGregor on or he's decided... Oh, what a hit! Woof! I'm right behind that, Sybold. Really good play by Dundee United. They have a free kick in the left, they work it, take oh. it short, play it to the right. It's a lovely one too with Fotheringham and Sybold. Sybold, let's fly. I am right behind that. That is inches away from the top corner. Yeah, great strike. McGregor's going nuts. <laughs> yeah, as you'd imagine. It's, it's a big, huge space in the middle of the pitch there for Sybold to drive into, and he's got a good left peg on him. Oh, there's a chance from the halfway line by Paul McGinn. It doesn't go in. It's nowhere. <laughs> But he's, uh, he's broken the play up, he took a few strides forward and he got to the halfway line and he tried to chip David Marshall. It was going wide, but uh, it, wasn't the, it wasn't the worst effort, that's for sure. No, right smile from Paul McGinn there as Aye. the camera pants to him. 
Uh, Alan, what are your thoughts? See, uh, uh, the, the, the mood music, I've been told that Morelos will be in his way. He's not in the manager's plans. You know, whatever people think about Morelos, he'll take a bit of replacing. Strikers, as we know, they come at yeah. a premium. Uh, you, what, sort, what sort of marketplace will Rangers be looking at, do you think, for a, a potential replacement? I think £45 million, pounds, £6 million maybe at the most. Um, they're the, the hardest thing to get, they're the most costly as well. The most important people in the What's team, that? really. Um, but big I think chance, sorry guys, a big chance, sorry Biscuits, uh, should have been 2-1, it's a great cross from Livingston right hand side, and it's, uh, it's Nubly, you know, he's normally uh, so prolific from there, he's only what, six, seven yards out, Huge the chance, goal in, in front of him, yeah, he's got to head it down, I, I, don't, I don't know, does he get under it a little bit, but... Uh, I mean, he wasn't even getting challenged. He's got to, he's got to score that. He's trying to generate too much power, I think, when he, when he just needs to direct it in. Yeah. Um, a lot of talk about Nicky Devlin over the last couple of weeks, possibly moving on. It's a fantastic ball in from him. Where, where, where do you see him? What's a level do you see him going to? Top, top end of the... I mean, well, I suppose he is top end, not today as things stand, but he has he been top end last of the top He's a good player, isn't he? he? Kenny, he was outstanding against Ross County. Uh, he was absolutely brilliant. Defensively, sound, but... You know, even you know, get joining in the attack, it, it was phenomenal. And there, there, Rory just saying, you know, he's got that end product, you know, producing a brilliant cross, and he done that against County time and time again. I, I don't know, could it could it be a Hearts or Hibs? You talk about Nicky Devlin here. Yeah, I don't have a question. Yeah. Hearts, Hearts are desperate for right backs. You know, yeah. for me, he falls into the category. It was brilliant, of Paul, Paul Mikey. McGinn. He, he, yeah, I know. I, look, I know. Well, I know for a fact when Stephen Glass was at Aberdeen, he was looking at him as well. I think that, you know, mm. for, for Hearts, obviously, they need a right back, whether they're going to play a back four or whether they're going to play, you know, wing backs. Nicky Devlin is one of those ones that is a sensible sign. He's not going to break the bank. You don't need massive expectations from him, but he comes in and he certainly bolsters the squad and he fills a position. Mm. I, I would be if I was uh, in that position. He, does, he doesn't have a dissimilar background as well to, to, to Alan Forrest. Different position, of course, but in terms of making that step from a Livingston to a Hearts... A chance! There's a goal! Kilman has been coming! It's a ball for goals and it's played in the can It's a lovely flick round the corner. Kilman's on to it and he beats the Dundee United keeper, Birrigiti. Rangers have broken the deadlock here at Ibrox. Rangers won Dundee United now. Penalty saved by Jamie McDonald. It was a strange... Strange set of, of affairs there, really. Nobody had, had an idea of who was fouled, who committed the foul, but Grant Arbor pointed to the, the spot quite quickly. But no matter what, Dom Thomas stood up, Jamie McDonald saved the initial penalty on the rebound as well. Grant Savory tried to get in, but it does remain Ruth Rovers 1, Queen's Park now. Yeah, tough time for Queen's Park, uh, Dundee in hot pursuit at the top of the championship table, so penalty saved uh, there, Dom Thomas, uh, with... The missed effort. That was actually a really nice goal, wasn't it, from Rangers? It's Tillman's initial movement. He spins the defender. Cantwell flips it round the corner. And the finish... It's a great touch, very Rory. good as well. It is, First it's touch a, is brilliant. It's it's another handball! That's another one! Rory, you need to help me out. It's again, it's across my right-hand side. The hand is outstretched. It's out. It clearly hits the hand. John Beaton, again, he's in a great position. Never mind yeah, help, but you really need to help the referee. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that, that that's got they've got to review that. That's a, again, I'll go with what's going on in the past. That's, that's got to be a penalty. It's coming at a fair old let pace, me cut right? Across you, Derek. Yeah, Sorry, that's a okay, problem Jack, here. No Xander problem. Clark. Xander Clark's gone down. Uh, no one near him. He's gone down for treatment. Just a moment ago, Josh Janelli was down getting a lengthy treatment from the Hearts uh, medical team. So be a lot of time added on at the end of this first half, but uh, this looks a bit more serious from Clark. No one was near him. The game has been stopped, and Xander Clark is getting treatment. Uh, and we're looking down here. I think he's going to have to come off, and uh, Ross Stewart will come on in goals for Hearts and the fourth substitution. Ross Stewart down there getting his top off. So it looks like the end of the afternoon for the Hearts goalkeeper. Xander Clark going off, and Ross Stewart getting stripped down there and ready to replace him. Derek, I, I, Check, you can take as long as you want because going by the last review, you've uh -huh. still got about another three or four minutes to chat away. Well, I've seen it again, and it, Curtis Main actually flicks it, and, and even Jason Holt's directly behind him. So the argument's going to be is Jason Holt's arm in a natural or unnatural position? Seen it from behind the goals, <laughs> his, both arms are outstretched above his head. Um, but the, yeah. the direction, the speed of the ball, how quickly it comes to him. Oh, what a chance! I'm sure he's offside. 
I think I think a oh. penalty yes. probably will be given for some given so the rules. But what right. I don't understand is if it flicks up that close off Jason Holt, it's not a penalty. Yet it flicks up off a player who's a yard well, away from him. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a penalty. I'm not doubting about it. Yeah, I, I, I think, think so. He's got and that's what I'm saying, Rory. You know, it's <coughs> sorry, he's, he's coming over to have a look. This Sander, yep. Sander Clark's decided to play on, and at the moment, Ross Stewart's just down there with a, a bib on. So they're going to give him a couple of minutes, so he plays on at the moment. Sorry, boys. No, that's okay. Is it? There's a slight delay in Derek's line there at St. Martin Park. That's what's causing a, yeah. a small issue for us there. So, John Beaton, right now, Rory, is over having a look. Yeah, based on the law, I, I don't think you can dispute Penalty that, kick, yeah, Kenny. That that's a penalty kick. Yeah, I've just got a lot of sympathy for Holt in that situation because, like I say, the ball's travelling that quickly from such a close distance. Um, and maybe that's where you need to look at the, the rule as a whole as opposed to that particular decision because based on the laws that is a penalty kick well, Derek, Derek told us how cool Mark yeah. O'Hara was with that first penalty in five minutes well, another well, chance for him Derek yeah and he, again he just walks up to these penalty spot kicks you know so calm he's got hands in the hips he's just walking up having a look at a keeper <laughs> same result same place <laughs> no problem it just makes it look so easy and by the way there's nothing wrong with the equipment it's just me I'm the delay. <laughs> <laughs> how, how well, that's They've been brilliant, Kenny. Right. They have been absolutely brilliant, St Murren. And they are cruising 3-0. How's Douglas Ross doing? <laughs> What's he doing? Well, well, he needs to concentrate. And <laughs> Other things. Well, I'm not even going to go there. I, I don't bring politics into football, no. That's, there's no, there's no, ba there's no. no banners at St Murren Park, no. <laughs> uh, As I said earlier, I said banner, banners at Ibrox uh, when I drove to work this morning. Uh, the team are delivering on the park. And we heard yesterday Michael Beale saying he will have a budget to spend, but there's no doubt that squad needs a fair bit of surgery on a goal in the English Premier League. Uh, it is a goal for Nottingham Forest. They are 1-0 up. That is at home to Wolves. Brennan Johnson in 38 minutes. Aloha 0, Airdrie 1. Craig Watson with a goal there on 42. In confirmation of that goal for St Mirren. Mark O'Hara, his second of the game, 42 minutes. St Mirren cruising 3-0 at home to Livingston this afternoon. As a result of that, they're up to fifth spot in the table. Alan... You feel for Dundee United at the time they've conceded, but you know, watching, glancing at the game every so often, that midfield bank of Dundee United as the half's worn on has just got deeper yeah, and deeper. I've said that, and deeper. Really, honestly, they're, they're, they're camped at the edge of their own box now, I'm afraid, and, and Fletcher is isolated. There's maybe 20, 30 yards between him and the rest of his team. And I think if Rangers got a second, I can't see United getting back into this. But while it's 1 now, they'll still have to believe that they've got an opportunity. But it's just Rangers keeping the ball, going from one side of the pitch to the other, trying to break down this very resolute United defence but it's been a decent enough shape but a really good goal by Tillman and, and Tillman would be one I would buy if I'm, if I'm Rangers if you've got the money to buy him you try and get him I think he's a terrific young player yeah he's a decent player what's happening at Madeira Park Willie the Dons still in control yes yes they are in control you would obviously think that that would be the case um, you know but St Johnson haven't given up they, have, they, they, they went to a back four they did have the three at the back, they've went to a back four, three in the midfield, but they've kept a two up top, so, you, you know, there's still hope, you would uh, think, in Callum Davidson's mind that they can get back into the game, um, but Aberdeen have a lot of the ball, a lot of possession, um, you know, and it's going to be a long afternoon for St Johnson, but, you know, 1-0 then, anything's possible, and they're hanging in there, and they're giving a good account of themselves for the home side. And Xander Clark, check, he, he's still playing on down there at Rugby Park. A chance! Oh, brilliant! Oh. Is it on site? No, it's not. Your man, he's going to call it. He's called it offside. It was me and right in the back post. And there was Douglas Ross up with the flag, so offside. Shame for me, and he looks like he's been excellent all day. But he's yeah. done really well at St Mern, hasn't he? Well, oh, it's a goal! What a mistake by Xander Clark! The ball is swept into him, and there's a fabulous cross from Danny Armstrong. And Go. right in the middle there, knocking the ball over the line. He's hugged there by players, I'll tell you in a second, but Kamarnock, for sure, 2-1 ahead against Hearts and Rugby Park. What a ball that was, whipped in from Danny Armstrong. 
Goal yeah. Dundee as well, Kenny. That's them 3 0 up. It's Lyle Cameron, the 20 year old, has scored his 10th goal of the season. Great work down the right hand side by Josh Mulligan. Flashed it low across the box, and there was Cameron from about eight yards out to put it past Ryan Fulton. Cruise control for Dundee, 3 0 up on Aki's. Yeah, surely game over there again. Kenny, we, Kenny, it's, yep. Kenny Chris, we might have a fourth. Christian Dodge, uh, sorry. Check. I think Douglas nah, Ross. He's offside, Derek. Just saying, hold on a second. He's offside, he's offside. He's offside, he's offside Yeah, he's offside. Right. So, so, right. So check your your saying Dodge down. has got a Kenny. That, that's by chance a huge Dodge goal check, it. isn't it? We spoke before about both these wow. managers. My goodness, what what a shot in the arm this would be for Kelly if they could hold on this afternoon. Oh what well, a hit then, that what, what a, what Ryan a Kent that. left foot shot off the underside of the bar. Rory, have a look. Does the keeper get a touch or is it deflected? What a hit from Kent. Smashes off the bar and away. Look like a fantastic strike, I must say. Uh, Xander Clark, that was an awful mistake between himself and Remy Matthews. They're having a terrible thing. Just seeing this again, Alan, hopefully in a couple of minutes, but it's not come back up yet. <laughs> like, I mean, well, uh, we spoke before about the importance of these games this afternoon as we approach uh, the split. You, you'd think game over in Paisley. What a first half for Stephen Robinson's side. Motherwell, Michael Stewart still ahead there at uh, Easter Road. Yeah, they're still ahead. There's three minutes injury time getting played here at the end of the first half. They've, uh, they've looked dangerous in this uh, first half and, you know, Hibs are they're, they're well and truly in the game. They've huffed and they've puffed, they've created a few half openings, not been able to obviously beat Liam Kelly in the Motherwell goal, but there's not a lot in it. But I think on the balance of play, Motherwell probably deserve just to be edging this as uh, half-time approaches. Still not seen that effort again, oh, here we go. Three. Right, here, here's the one at Ibrox. Good strike with his time added on at Rugby Park, which I find very bizarre. Too long, long periods of treatment. Difficult to see, Alan, because it was behind the goal of you and the, the crossbar was blocking the ball in his glove, but I think he potentially oh. did get a slight touch to it. Yeah, Morelos is a chance at the back post. It's a, it's a corner kick. Tavernier flicked on by Tillman. Not a great corner. Tillman does really well to flick on. Morelos at the back just knocks it over the top. Some halftime scores coming in. Crystal Palace nil, Leicester City nil. Uh, there was another one coming through. Queen of the South nil, Peter Head nil. Peter Head, of course, uh, uh, sacked their manager. It was quite an interview, actually. I saw with Tyrone with the chairman there, Roger Morrison, <laughs> talking about the signings. My goodness, he, he went to town on that. Uh, and what else? Halftime at Stars Park. Thanks, so the, the home side ahead there, one goal to nil, Tom Lang with a goal in 30 minutes, Dom Thomas uh, with a penalty saved for the league leaders, uh, Dunfermline nil, the leaders in League One, Kelty Hearts nil, uh, Wraith Rovers one, say Queen's Park nil, Hibs nil, Motherwell oh, one. Oh, time man, Easter Road alive. as well, Kenny, it's one nil to Motherwell. Dundee. Thank you. Yes, Kenny. It's 4 0. Luke McCown has added a fourth. This is miserable for Hamilton Ackies. He got the ball on the edge of the box. Ryan Fulton rushed out and he just poked it under him and it rolled slowly and painfully into the net. Dundee 4, Hamilton Ackies 0. Yeah, I mean, just look at that table now, the live table. And Dundee are home and host today, no doubt about that. But they are now within one point of the leaders, Queen's Park, and they've got a game in hand. Yeah, huge. Um, D Dundee, are a st <laughs> they're a strange one. Um, you know, they slip up when you, you least expect them to just. When they've got a lot of momentum and things, so uh, Gary Boyer will be hopeful they can keep that up and go on a little run now. And as Kenny said, um, in the build up to the game, you know, that home straight really drive home and put Queen's Park under pressure. Arsenal one, That's Leeds United half half Rugby time. Park. Yep, Kilmarnock. Sorry, Kenny, half time at Rugby Park, Kilmarnock two, Hearts one. Yeah, we'll be hearing from fans of both these teams later in the programme just to tell you again, sports will now be extended every Saturday until 7 o'clock and a big part half, of that half extended time. time. Ibrox, Kenny Rangers one, Dundee United nil. Thanks, Alan. Yes, a big part of that extended time will be fan involvement. So we want to hear from fans today. We want to hear about your away day, your trip, your thoughts. You'll, you'll hear the manager interviews after the game. What are your thoughts on that? Luke McGowan, that's come through. The 49th minute has... Dundee 4 0 up the home to Hamilton Ackies. Dumbarton with a late goal there in the first half. Aaron Linus uh, has a 1 0 up at home to Stenhouse Muir, and that's you up to date. We're still waiting uh, on the game. Uh, Willie Miller, you're still playing there? We're still playing here, yeah. We're a little bit later, the kicking off. Um, you know, and although Aberdeen have got uh, the, the, the numbers, uh, superior numbers, that, 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 you know, St. St. Murners, uh, St. Johnson are still in this game. Uh, they're very keen they've kept the two up top as well so they've always got targets up top 
And Aberdeen really aren't taking advantage uh, of the extra man that they've got on the field of play just now. So I would say that uh, although Callum Davidson will be disappointed getting Andrew Considine sent off, but he'll be happy with how his team's responded. Um, but yeah, we are well into time added on here um, at half time, just waiting on that final whistle, Kenny. Yep, uh, giving the VAR checks there, and Paisley still playing uh, Derek Ferguson. Yeah, we've got seven minutes, I think, uh, Kenny, I've added on time. I think we're five minutes into that, so <clears throat> still a couple of minutes to go here. Yeah, uh, so the home side absolutely cruising there in that game. Oh, oh. A double. Yep. Is that a goal? Is that a goal? A Devlin? Should Devlin, he just hooks it, it hits the bar, it hits the post. Oh, he's claiming it's been over the line. I don't know, Rory, come and help me again. But that's incredible. Hits Maybe a bar, penalty shot in there the as well. Was it one of the Livingston players go down in the follow up? Right. I don't know, there was a claim. I'll have a wee look when it comes through. I think it's wow. actually Shinny potentially at the back post who tries to, to hook it back round um, and over yeah, the goalkeeper. Shinny, sorry. I no, don't no, think it's right. Devlin. It's, a wee, it's not right hand side. Chess it well, goes down. Oh, wow. It's the under, the, so it hits the bar, hits the post. I mean, it's impossible to tell whether it's over the line for the angle I'm the getting, line. but it's very, very close <laughs> from the angle I'm seeing anyway. Th and Kenny's right, the follow yeah, up. I think they've only got. Down. And, and the problem is, I think they've only got, I think it's six cameras or something here today. <laughs> not. I mean, John, I, I know, but I mean, listen, I mean, I mean does it take? I mean, John Beaton, he, he's clearly been spoken to at the moment. So here's the first one, Rory. Half time, half time. I mean, Perth. You, can't uh, say, you can't say with any degree of certainty that that is yeah. not over the line, but it doesn't look it to me. And seeing that one, the second one again, it's not a penalty. I don't think he falls over. He's running quickly. I don't, I don't think that's a penalty kick, in my opinion. But I said you would get a, a low scoring game today, Derek. You've had three goals and plenty of action. <laughs> but when these two get together, there always is goals. That, that's if you look at, uh, in the past. So I, I, I can, I knew that myself today coming here, uh, but I didn't expect expect it to be so one-sided as it is St Mern being excellent so good in the wider area St Mern the way they set up strain and one side small on the other or tan, uh, Tanta small, when he's fit yeah. yeah very very good yeah Yeah. so just, just looking at that the support. Uh, from, from, from third place down uh, Hearts 45 points Aberdeen 44 St Mern 41 Hibs 40 Livingston 39 so still incredibly tight there someone suggested earlier on uh, perhaps too late for Motherwell 33 points there what 7 points off uh, the top six at the moment yeah so that looks uh, like half time there uh, half time there Derek yeah, I just went half time just discussing a few things with uh, my carer, Martin Dowden, <laughs> just keeping me right. Uh, but uh, I don't know, would, would, so that clearly wasn't a goal because I had the, they had a little check and they went, well, obviously they've came to the conclusion that nope, it didn't cross the line, but credible first half. So I see it's St Mern going 3 0 up. Yeah, uh, cruising there uh, in Paisley, the home side. So lots of drama, lots of goals in the first half. Uh, plenty more to come in sports. And we're with you today right through until 7 o'clock. Chance score! Open all mics on FM and BBC Sounds. Live on Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. We've been searching for the best new and emerging talent in Scotland's diverse music scene. Join Shireen Cutkelvin and me, Phoebe IH, as four finalists battle it out to become BBC Introducing Scottish Act of the Year. They are Vloer, oh, Queen of Harps, Tara Ken, Watch me burn. and The Big Day. BBC introducing Scottish Act of the Year. Watch now on BBC iPlayer. You're listening to Sports Sound on BBC Radio Scotland. A commentary match this afternoon comes from Ibrox Rangers against Dundee United. There for us, Kenny Miller and Liam McLeod. Yeah, only twice in the last 10 seasons as the team sitting bottom after 29 matches escaped relegation. Dundee United, of course, two adrift of County at the foot of the Premiership, but they've defended pretty well in this one, even though they trail 1-0 at the break. Malik Tillman with the only goal, seven minutes from the interval, really well worked. Goldson to Cantwell, out to Tillman on the right-hand side of the box, and he smashed it home to give Rangers the lead. And they've had lots of the ball, they just hadn't created too much in the match. There was a nervy moment for United when he's... United keeper Birigiti spilled the ball, fell towards Tillman, down Tillman went, there was a brief appeal for a penalty, 
which was waved away. The United have come with a threat. They'll be disappointed. Peter Pollitt's got off injured. He's had plenty injury problems recently. He drove forward early in the game, but rather than shooting himself when he was in on Alan McGregor, he tried to tee up Fletcher. He played it straight to Ben Davis. Craig Sibbled with a shot from just outside the box, dipped just at the last uh, too late, and it went over the crossbar. And that was probably United's best opportunity in the game. Ryan Kent smacked one off the crossbar after Rangers had taken the lead, and they had begun to go through the gears at that point. So, quite clearly, it's a deserved lead for Rangers who are looking to get back to within six points of Celtic at the top of the Premiership tonight. Half-time, though, Rangers won, Dundee United nil. Yeah, so the home side in control there at Ibrox. Let's then get to Rugby Park. Come on against Hearts. A cracking first half, Chick Young. Indeed it was, uh, Kenny, and uh, perhaps surprising scoreline. Kamarnock uh, leading Hearts by two goals to one at half-time. Hearts uh, took the lead. We're off to an impressive start. Although, first two minutes of this match, Kamarnock were very much in charge, pressing and trying to create opportunities. But Shankland uh, had a, a great chance. He robbed Jerry Dorset, uh, cut in for the right side and, and fired, rifled a low shot along the surface in at the right-hand post uh, of Sam Walker to give Hearts the lead. But... Hart, uh, Kilmarnock came barreling back, they were awarded a penalty, uh, it, was a, 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 it was a mistake by Xander Clark, Passel was brought down inside the box, and after a long while, uh, Danny Armstrong calmly slotted the penalty away for the equaliser, and then just before half-time, Kilmarnock took the lead, it was a fabulous ball in from Armstrong, a devastating cross, as good as you'll see all, all over the Europe this weekend, I'm telling you, and there was Dodge, Christian Dodge, just rattling it in from inside the box, smothered by his teammates in celebration. And Kilmarnock have a lead, and at the moment, some kind of grip on the three points. Disappointment for Hearts, who, of course, were torn apart by Aberdeen in their last fixture. And Kilmarnock, real refreshed hope uh, that they could put a, a big gap between themselves and Dundee United at the bottom of the table. A lot to play for still in the second half. This is going to be mightily interesting. 45 minutes half time at Islow. Kilmarnock 2, Hearts 1. Thanks to Chick Young, Willie Miller is the McDermott Park for us this afternoon. St Johnson against Aberdeen, the wayside in control, Willie. They are, yeah, half time at St Johnson 0, Aberdeen uh, 1. Um, St Johnson started really well, they had a couple of opportunities. Uh, Liam Gordon having a strike, and then Andrew Considine uh, having a volley as well. Both of them uh, saved by uh, Kel Roos in goal. But uh, in six minutes, Aberdeen. Really, after these two shots, went up the park and uh, it was uh, Graham Shinney put the pass through uh, to Majofsky and Majofsky get the better of Andrew Considine. Andrew Considine tugs at Majofsky, goes down. The referee initially points to the penalty spot but doesn't send Andrew Considine off. He's been asked to, uh, you, you know, have a look at the incident again. He has a look, takes his time, quite a long time, but I think eventually he gets it right. He awards the free kick outside the box and he shows birthday boy Andrew Considine on his 36th birthday the red card that was after only six minutes of uh, uh, play so you, you know St Johnson had to reshape they did that they went to a back four and since then they've done okay uh, they haven't had too many opportunities forward uh, Stephen May had a strike that drifted by the far post uh, but the goal came for Aberdeen in uh, 30 minutes very strange goal indeed it was Johnny Hayes from the right-hand side, taking the corner with his left foot. He, he, he curls it into the near post. It falls low towards the near post. McDonald gets a touch on it. And then Matthews somehow looked as though he had it under control. It comes out, his, his arm come off, another part of his body, and somehow creeped over the, 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 the goal line to give Aberdeen that lead. Since then, Aberdeen have had plenty of possession, not too many uh, opportunities. Uh, I think St Johnson have done well to cope. Uh, with the issues that they've got going down to 10 men. So they're still in this game, but at half-time, Aberdeen have their noses in front, 1-0. Thanks to Willie Miller, the away side also in control at Easter Road, Michael Stewart. They are indeed, Motherwell continue in a good form that they've uh, been shown under Stuart Kettlewell. They lead 1-0 at half-time, probably just deserving to edge it here as well. But, uh, they took the lead seven minutes into the game. There was a ball uh, through for Kevin Van Veen. He was 1v1 with uh, David Marshall, he should have been able to get it past the keeper, he didn't, the keeper managed to get a touch on it, it ricocheted out to the edge of the box, and um, I think it was Dean Cornelius just nipped in front of Jake doyle Hayes, who picked up a yellow card for the challenge, the free kick was given, and up stepped Sean Goss, curled it wonderfully well over the, the, uh, over the wall and off the underside of the crossbar to put the Fur Park side 1-0 up, 
and uh, the first half has been from that stage a little bit nip and tuck Motherwell were the better side after the first goal for the, the, the early stages of the first half they were probing looked as if they were potentially going to be able to get a second goal they weren't able to and have started to come back into the game and uh, fashioned a few half opportunities uh, Josh Campbell with one clipped into the box Kevin Nisbet rising up above the rest of the defence and got the header on it but Liam Kelly just managing to get his fingertips to put over the crossbar and that has been the, the way the first half has gone both sides huffing and puffing around the edge of the box not able to get another goal and Motherwell just edged it 1-0 here at Easter Road to the away side so far Yeah, so the away side with the noses in front they are a very different story in Paisley, Derek Ferguson the home side absolutely cruising yeah, tremendous stuff, uh, Kenny, from St Mernes elite Livingston. Three goals to nil with the game. It got off to a flyer for the home side. Uh, you know, on the front foot, winning a penalty in the first minute. But the only problem was uh, referee John Beaton waiting on VAR with the penalty then converted on the fifth minute. So having to wait four or five minutes, not ideal. But the Saints, they kept the foot on the gas and doubled their lead on 18 minutes. It was Curtis Main picking up uh, uh, picking up the ball in a wide area and then picking out his uh, strike partner, Tony Watt, to finish. Uh, Tony Watt finishing with real class from close in. The home side, well, they should have made it three on 32 minutes. Curtis Main bearing in on goal at the angle, 10 yards out, but resulting, his shot resulting with a weak effort. Livy had a chance to get one back in 36 minutes. Nubly fluffing his lines, but the Saints did get that. A lose of third on 42 minutes. Another penalty. Nubly, the culprit with outstretched arm. O'Hara, well, he does it must, does he, from the spot. And he placed the ball well away from the keeper into the back of the net. Right on the break. Livingston, uh, so unlucky. It was Shinny with uh, a hook shot, hitting the bar. Then the post, then cleared. Crazy stuff at times, but... Here in Paisley, a commanding lead, a St Mirren lead, Livingston, three goals to nil. Thank you to Derek Ferguson. Once again, a choice of listening. If you want to hear full commentary of Rangers against the United, that's on Radio Scotland Extra, Medium Wave and online. Here on FM Sounds and Digital, it's Open All Mics. Chance score! Open All Mics on FM and BBC Sounds. Live on Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. Welcome back to Open All Mics, a roundup of the halftime scores in the Premiership. Hibs nil, Motherwell one, Kilmarnock two, Hearts one, Rangers one, Dundee United nil, St Johnson nil, Aberdeen one, St Mirren three, Livingston nil. In the Championship this afternoon, Cove Rangers nil, Partick Thistle two, Dundee four, Hamilton Ackies nil, Morton nil, Inverness Cali Thistle nil, Wraith Rovers one, Queen's Park nil in League One, Alloa nil, Airdrie one, Clyde nil, Falkirk nil, Dunfermline nil, Kelty Hearts nil, SC Edinburgh nil, Montrose one, and Queen of the South nil, Peterhead nil, and in League Two, Bonnie Rose nil, Stranraer nil, Dumbarton one, Stennis Muir nil, East Fife nil, Annan Athletic nil, Elgin City nil, Stirling Albion two. Forfort nil, Albion Rovers one, and in the English top fight, lunchtime kickoff have finished. Manchester City four, Liverpool one, Arsenal one, Leeds United nil as a half time, as are all the rest of these games. Bournemouth nil, Fulham one, Brighton two, Brentford two, Crystal Palace nil, Leicester City nil, Nottingham Forest one, Wolves nil, and the tea time kickoff, Chelsea against Aston Villa. Let's get back into the Championship. We'll get reporters at two games there, and the leaders Can very much. Any? Uh, yep. Can I just say before you go to the boys, there's been a double substitution by Hearts and the goalkeeper, Xander Clark, is one of them. I, I'm sure I remember that injury. He was going to go off and be replaced by Ross Stewart. They decide not to. I'm sure that might have been a factor in the scoring of Kilmarnock's second goal. In any case, he's gone off to replace by Ross Stewart. Uh, and Keogh has gone off as well and Barry Mackay has come on yeah certainly needs to ring the changes they are behind down there at Rugby Park let's get into the championship then as I said the leaders uh, really struggling in Fife this afternoon Amy Canavan they absolutely are Kenny yeah it's a deserved lead for it Rovers have played some lovely stuff in the midfield 
and on the periphery of the, the box at times. Connolly, Stanton and Easton, they really are a joy to watch. Some really silky stuff from Ian but he said that sometimes it's just like that final quality with the with the end product. But they do have that crucial opening goal and they do have the lead. We've just got back underway um, after a wee spell of getting some shots away and, and forcing a, a string of corners. Tom Lang raced the front post, flicked on the end of a well-worked corner. Owen Coyle has had a, a fair few shakes of the head. He's also made a half-time substitution. Young Aaron Healy coming on in pl place of Josh McPake. His side have looked sloppy in defence, particularly and um, really allowing Wraith to, to nip in a few too many times for his liking, I'd assume. Jimmy McDonald in the Wraith goal pulled out, a, a, to be honest, a rather routine, a rather routine save, unlike it is for me, um, from Dom Thomas's rather lacklustre penalty. Jack Thompson was fouled, I think, in the box, potentially by Liam Dick, straight down the middle along the deck, McDonald down comfortably. And with that score that, that Kenny, no doubt, is about to bring you soon as well, up in Dens, it just seems to keep getting added and added on to, no doubt, being relayed to the players at halftime. It'll be interesting to see what their reaction is in the second half. Nothing of note as it stands. We've just played about two minutes in the second half, where it is Ruth Rovers 1, Queen's Park now. Yeah, thanks to Amy Canavan. As she alluded to there, Kenny Crawford, the home side really laying down a marker this afternoon at Dens Park. Definitely, Kenny. It's been absolutely emphatic here. Second half just underway. Dundee for Hamilton Ackies now. And not only as things stand up, they reduced the gap to one point between them and Queen's Park. They've also switched around the goal difference. Dundee were had a worse goal difference at three o'clock today than Queen's Park. Now they're one goal better than Queen's Park, and that could be crucial at the end of the season, as it has proved in the past. But yeah, four different scorers today. Alex Yakubiak, Ryan Sweeney, Lyle Cameron and Luke McCown. It's looking good for the Dark Blues, and I wouldn't be surprised, as would many people in Dens Park today if there was more goals here for the home side. 4-0 at the moment. Thanks to Kenny. So just look at that table again. Dundee, as things stand, within a point of leaders Queen's Park and they have a game in hand. An early goal uh, in this... Actually, a couple of early goals going in. Um, Queen of the South 1-0 up at home to Peterhead. Rudy Payton on 48 minutes. Bournemouth have equalised at home to Fulham. Marcus Tavernier on 50 and Arsenal have doubled their advantage at home to Leeds United Ben White on 47 minutes back underway at uh, Ibrox Alan Preston we are and it's very much the same Kenny as it was at the tail end of that second half all possession for Rangers they had a lovely move a couple of minutes ago Tillman was almost in but just a little bit of miscontrol but United are just camped at the edge of their own box they've got to do something they've got to try and get up the park if they can Fletcher again on his own and you can only see Rangers adding to this. Uh, Brentford now 3-2 up away at Brighton. Ethan Pinnock uh, with a goal there on 49 minutes. You're back underway, my German, Willie. But we are, Kenny, yeah. Yeah, just started, kicked off. Nothing much happening so far. No changes at half-time um, either. So it's just a case of can Aberdeen, you know, I wouldn't say hold on to it, but maybe add to it and make it a little bit more comfortable than what it was in the first half because... <laughs> You know, having that to man advantage, they should really be doing much better than they are. Michael, talk to us. Bonkers, bonkers yeah, yellow card here, yep. Kenny. But it's, uh, Grant tried to take a quick free kick for Hearts, and Rory McKenzie, actually, it was a slight tackle as, uh, in front of the ball as he tried to take the free kick. Simple as the yellow cards. To, I don't know what he was trying to do, how he thought he'd get away with that. Actually, he made a slight tackle on the player taking a free kick. So it was a yellow card for him. Chick, what's our reaction um, from the away fans? You spoke about a big travelling support this afternoon. Been a bit quiet uh, since the start of the second half, and in the last few moments of the first half, they were uh, very, uh, very much in voice, singing and getting behind their team earlier on. And of course, went into to that lead. But I have to say, since uh, maybe even Commander Sequoia, but certainly since the second goal, they've been silent. It's a chance for Kelly again. What a waste that was by Armstrong. He was clear through. He just missed it and lobbed it into the goalkeeper's arms. Yeah, there's, uh, they've gone a bit quiet of the Hearts fans at the moment. Kamarnik in charge of this game, but still 40 minutes to go. Yeah, I've just seen that chance from Armstrong uh, back again. Maybe a wee bit harsh check. That's not that's not an easy skill. Um, it was at a bit of an oh, angle it was well. for Rory, Have you never <laughs> seen Chick oh, play? Have you ever seen Dukla? Oh, oh, that's that way. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have not begged him in the days. <laughs> days. He'd have been turned, the comparing oh! that goal to Zidane if it had went in. Is that a chance somewhere? Another chance. Yeah, a chance for Livingston. It's Devlin marauding down that right-hand side, just bearing in and goal. The angle's always against him. He tries to find that far right-hand corner, drives it hard and low, just missing the target. 
Elgin City now 3-0 down at home to Stirling Albion. Robert Toms from the third there on 52 minutes. Michael Stewart, just talk to us about what's worked for Motherwell through there at Easter Road and, and what the problems are for the home side. Well, at the top end of the park, um, I think that Mandron and uh, Kevin Van Veen have been a, a real threat. Middle of the park, they've, uh, they've had a good balance to them. Hibs have actually changed shape and had a substitution at half-time as a corner kick comes in for Motherwell. It's gone behind for another one. Hibs have made a sub, they've taken off Jake Doyle Hayes in the middle, they've brought on McCurdy and they've gone uh, four at the back now and uh, McCurdy's gone on, so it's like a 4-3-3 McCurdy's gone on the right hand side of a front three with uh, Hopper on the left and Nisbet through the middle so I think that tells you that Motherwell, certainly from Lee Johnson's perspective were getting the better of the game they were like for like, ah. the systems were the same in the first half, Hibs have changed and they've made that substitution, obviously looking for some sort of reaction and getting a, a better footing in the second half. Yellow card for James Tavernier. I think that's very harsh, to be honest. You'll have a look at it, Rory. He's in the corner flag. He just puts his hand up to try and protect the ball. And... Oh! Here's a... What's he going to give? He's given a penalty kick to Motherwell. I tell you, I think... I think it was Dean Casey on the middle, of the, on the edge of the box. He, he sort of did an overhead kick to flick it into the, into the box he didn't catch it particularly well and it landed a lot closer to I'm not I think it's James Furlong perhaps it's running in from the left hand side and David Marshall makes a decision early to come out for it and as I said he doesn't catch it particularly well and he keeps coming and then he clatters into it it's not yeah, to what, Furlong what? is it Spittle perhaps Anyway, What's the penalty kick's about? been given. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's ridiculous, that challenge, but, isn't it? Well, I think he just makes a decision yeah, spittle, early. Michael Spittle. He makes a decision early to go for the ball. And as I said, the way that Casey connects with it, he sort of slices it and it's going away from goal. It's difficult for the goalkeeper to then pull out of it. And um, he's clattered into him. You'll be able to see it better than me. Um, he obviously doesn't get any of the ball. He does. That'd be a red card if an outfield player, would it not? Well, I mean, that's a ridiculous challenge, been, isn't it? He's, he's been booked. I've not yeah. seen it again. I, I think, think I think taking everything into consideration, you know, he's trying to make himself bigger. He does miss time. I don't think it's a red card. I think a yellow card's correct, in my see, opinion. See that? See that incident when goalkeepers come out and they throw one arm one side, one arm the other side, and one leg and one way and a, another leg the other. I think that is dangerous. It uh, is dangerous, Willie, but th th this one They here, get away with he, it, though. He, yeah. he, his leg, you know, it's not one of those ones for an outfield player where he's went in high with his boot, the studs are up. Oh, it's yeah, a straight... Brilliant, no! Oh, it's just a brilliant moment from Strain. St Murren just picking the ball up outside of the box, the right-hand side, just skips past the opposing player. He's just trying to find that top corner, just going inches past. Uh, marvellous stuff. I've just seen a replay of this as well. Casey doesn't, as I said, doesn't make a great contact with it. And not only that, it's when it bounces as well, it bounces further away from David Marshall. I've got great sympathy for the keeper because it's it's in the middle, you know, in between the two players. He's made an early decision to come for it and it spins further away from him. And we're talking about marginal whether he gets it or not as Van Veen is about to step up for the penalty kick. And it's so oh, slithered! under Marshall yeah. hey, what a terrible few minutes for David Marshall not a great penalty looked as if the keeper was going to save it all day long and it just squirms under the keeper and into the back of the net 2-0 to Motherwell he almost looked embarrassed to celebrate it the way it went in in the end but he'll be delighted that it did but I think the referee gets that spot on a yellow card a penalty so credit to, to him because we're quick to jump on them when they get things wrong so for me it was the right decision all round um, mountain to climb now for Hibs but it's a terrible day for the goalkeepers now that David Marshall's not saved that penalty and given the way a penalty as well uh, Goal in the Championship Morton nil, Inverness Cali Thistle 1 Scott Allardyce on 54 minutes uh, in the English Premier League Crystal Palace nil, Leicester City 1 Ricardo Pereira on 56 and Partick Thistle now 3 oh, nil up away at Cove Rangers Brian Graham on 58 check yeah, I wondered if it's Stephen King's level a challenge on Jordan Jones. I thought he was going for the red card there. The Kilmarnock fans wanted a straight red. He's been given a yellow, which is a pretty... Uh, I don't know, I'd like to see that one again. I don't know if you've seen that, Rory. He, com he comes in, gets a bit of the ball, but it was a pretty hefty challenge for me. Yellow card he gets, not a red. Yeah. And Kingsley and Kilmarnock with a free kick and interest. Oh, here's it. another chance from the... <laughs> They're trying to chip David Marshall again. This one, Sean Goss inside the centre circle 
This one's oh, on the target, oh. just not enough on it. I think it's that game in the Euros for Scotland that there's people are now thinking I can chip David Marshall for 50 yards. <laughs> Keepers That's about three efforts against them today. Keepers don't like it. Uh, they, they go Goal! 2 0 Rangers! Tillman again! Ball's played into his feet, he just shifts it out and hits it. Might have taken a slight deflection off McMahon into the back of the net. For me, that should be game over. Rangers 2, Dundee United 0. Yeah, just watching him celebrate now. The goalkeeper, it's very close to his body, but I think he's unsighted because the defender's trying to block it. But it's that little chop to delay and delay the shot that gets the Dundee United players diving all over the place. But two for Tillman, and it sounds by your updates today, Alan, he's involved in everything. Yeah, he's been excellent. He's been really, really good. He's got great feet, really quick feet. There's a couple of defenders, like half blocks, it looks like for me. They go down on one knee, I think. But he's, they don't defend enough, don't get to the ball. And eventually it probably goes through one of the legs, if not hits one of them on the way in. Really good finish, two good goals from him. Rangers cruising there, Arsenal cruising at home to Leeds United. Gabriel Jesus with his second of the game. They now lead Leeds by three goals to nil. Uh, Tillman with that goal, that second for Rangers on 55 minutes. Keeper's got to do better there. I, I, I mean, it's, it's struck relatively hard from a close range, but I mean, he almost dives over the ball. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, for me again the... I, th I think for United uh, going forward if they can stay up I do, I do certainly think they need to address the goalkeeping situation yeah well he, he left a lot to be desired there that's for sure going back to the, the challenge at Rugby Park from Stephen Kingsley I, I think the angle of his legs pointing I, I don't think he's endangering the important as such he wipes him out and I think again for me it's a yellow card chick yeah probably I have to say Hearts are taking a real pounding at the moment. It's only 2 1, so of course, it only takes a goal to get them level. But uh, Kamarnik are all over them, and they're really nervous at the back. Hearts look at the moment, just getting the ball. Even even Lon Shankman's back clearing things out the six yard box. So it's all Kamarnik, but of course, one goal is always a nervy lead. The big, pro the big problem for Hearts is their midfield's not good enough. That is the, that is the problem, the real problem that I see in their, their team. It's leading to a lot of issues because teams are. Uh, you know, you look at the Aberdeen uh, game at Pataudry, just completely overrun in the middle of the park. Shinny just overpowered uh, the, the midfield and Hearts oh, cool. touched on it earlier that uh, Snodgrass is a wonderful football player, but he needs the right players around him and he doesn't have it. They're not good enough so in the what middle. Is, are you talking about lack of pace or lack of power? What are you talking about? Kenny, Kenny, Kenny we've got, we may have a red card here. There's a VAR check. Talk about a possible red card. we we'll just stand by. You'll see that again, Rory. It's a challenge. Uh, in the in the Kamarnock area, they're taking up again well, a uh, long time in this. I'll let you know, Kenny. It's one it's one of these instances, Chick, where when you see the stills of it, it'll look horrendous. But when you give it context, Rory McKenzie, the ball bounces, he clears it, and the Hearts player, I'm not quite sure who it is, runs into his leg. Uh, I can see why potentially people would think it was a red card, looking at it from certain angles. So have they given a penalty? No, no, it's out, no, it's, it's, out, it's, it's not in no, the area, it's in, Michael. It's in the middle of the park. I thought you said the, said the area. No, that, no, no, it's, out, it's outside oh, the got, area. Oh, he's he's the coming across. Like Kenny, he's, the, the, the referee who's the referee's Jun Anderson. He's coming across to have a look at this at the screen. So you're getting you're getting the pictures. You have seen what happened. We heard Rory describe it. It happened over on the far side of the park, the middle of the in the middle of the the uh, the Kilmarnock half. Jun Anderson having a look at that. I don't think it's a red card, moment. Chick. This, gonna, this will be a huge blow because Chick saying the home side have been in control yeah, down it's there. He's going to give the red card, I'm no doubt about <laughs> that, because it looks terrible from... And he will get a still at the point of contact, the referee. That's part of what you get when you go across to the screen. And it does look bad, but I just don't know how he can know he's there. He's having a good long look. a long time, yeah. several, several reruns at this... Uh, to, to decide if they had enough. Yeah, I can see it from another there. angle now. Yep. I don't know if he does get enough on the ball, Mackenzie. Maybe he's going across, and it is going to be a red card, yeah. I think. Yeah, Mackenzie off. So the referee has done that. Barra made the decision for him or helped him with the decision. And Rory Mackenzie off. Kamarnock a lead by two goals to one, but the captain today has been red carded oh. and they're down to 10 men. Yeah, maybe not quite as confident as I was initially that it wasn't a red card. I can see why it's given. Uh, I just think it looks worse than it actually was. So four for have equalised Nathan Flanagan, 1-1 at home to oh, Albion Rovers. Yep. 
Apologies, Kenny. Yeah, Lewis Vaughan with the second for Wraith Rovers. A wonderful goal on the edge of the box. Curl it in into the bottom corner along the deck. Queen's Park, their lead at the top of the table, will be cut down to one point if it stays as is here. Wraith Rovers 2, Queen's Park 0. Yeah, Dundee piling on the pressure today. So four for one, Albion Rovers 1, Nathan Flanagan on 62 minutes. Crystal Palace 1, Leicester on. City 1, Daniel Everson on 59 minutes. Cove Rangers 0, Partick Thistle 4, uh, Kevin Holt on 62 minutes for their wayside and confirmation. Rory McKenzie, that red card on 58 minutes, but the home side do have a 2-1 advantage down there. Yes, Alan? That's a brilliant chance for Rangers again. Really good play. Cantwell's involved. Morelos is in there. Jack eventually comes to Kent on the left-hand side and he just leans back. Shot over the top of the crossbar. Again, that was another chance. Tillman had an effort as we were going through that period at Kilmarnock. Good, really good shot. Almost got his heart to it. Keeper just, again, all over the place. Pams it out back into danger. And if Tavernier had a better touch, he might have put the ball in the back of the net. That's where you're looking for more from Kent, in my opinion, Alan. He, he doesn't convert enough of those chances. I'm not saying it's a particularly straightforward, easy chance, but you would expect him to convert some of those chances, and he doesn't seem to convert many at all. Oh. Should have been five for Dundee there, Alex Yakubiak scooping over from Paul McMullen's low cross, still 4 0. Dundee against the Aki's. So, as things stand in the top flight, Hibbs nil, Motherwell two, Kamarnock two, Hearts one, the home side down to 10 men. Rangers two, Dundee United nil, St Johnson also down to 10 men, a goal down at home to Aberdeen. St Mirren cruising against Livingston, leading by three goals to nil into the Championship. Cove Rangers nil, Partick Thistle four, Dundee four, Hamilton Ackies nil, Morton nil, Inverness Cali Thistle one, Ray Rovers two nil up on Queen's Park now. So as it stands, Dundee a point behind Queen's Park with a game in hand. In League One, Alloa nil, Airdrie one, Clyde nil, Falkirk nil, the leaders down firm oh, nil, Celtic oh. Hearts nil. Yes, Michael. Wonderful goal from Hibbs. There's a ball into the box from Chris Cadden, who I've said it a million times before, his delivery is brilliant. And he puts it on a pinpoint accuracy on Kevin Nisbet's head. And he just passes it comfortably with a head into the back of the net. Liam Kelly has no chance. He just guides it past the Motherwell goalkeeper. 2 1. Chance, chat. Oh. The chance for Livingston have gone a little bit more. Day. Sorry, Chip, I'll tell, just tell you about that Livingston no, chance. They're going a little it. bit more direct. Pardon, I can't hear you. No, it's okay. There's, 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 a, there's a delay in your line, Derek. You go ahead. Is there no, it was a, the second half, uh, they've made a couple of changes. Oh, St Mern, Ahara was booked in the first minute, albeit he scored the two penalty kicks, so they brought Kilty on. They're, they're just kind of managing the game, but the difference with uh, looking at Livingston, they're going a little bit more direct in the second half, and that was a that was a kind of example of it, just a long ball to Nubley, out muscles, think it was Shaughnessy, then he's in goal, and in goal, he's just in the side of the box, he's trying to find that top left-hand corner, just overcooks it a little bit. But uh, more of an even game in the second half, but you can just see how, how this St Mern side, with that three-goal lead, just manage it and just try to keep uh, Livingston at bay at the moment. Hibs oh. have made a triple change here at uh, Easter Road. Off is gone, uh, Lewis oh. Stevenson, Josh Campbell, and the other sub has been, uh, who is it? Is Egan Riley as well. And on has come Jabriya at left back. Joe uh, Newell's gone at the middle of the park. And up the top is uh, Kurevich has come on. So there's a little bit more of an attacking system. Two up top, Kurevich and, and Nisbet now. Obviously, Lee Johnson is trying to get Hibbs back into this side with an attacking uh, formation now with uh, those three subs. Was that a chance, Chick? Nearly, nearly an equal. Absolutely. Ron Shankman la lashed it at the goalkeeper, but Sam Walker away was like, he juggled like a red hot chip. It was butter all over the place, <laughs> up and down. <laughs> Benji got a hold of it. And of course, there's been a change as well before that. Luke Chambers come on to replace Jordan Jones. That'll tell you that Kamana are going to try and sit uh, and what they've got, but they've got a long hike ahead of them at 26, 25 minutes. Uh, still to hang out, but uh, they've got a corner at the moment. Uh, Hart's about to make a double change as well. I see down there, um, it's going to be Alec Cochrane coming on, uh, and uh, a change beside that as well. Tell you about that in a minute. It's so, Stephen Humphrey's time. Oh! McCurdy, there was a ball thrown into the box from Chabria, it went all the way through to the far side. McCurdy was over in the far end, 
he volleys it and it went through all the players and just drifted past the back post Liam Kelly was standing there helpless just praying that it went past the post as it did still 2-1 it's good technique sidewinder just creeps by as you say um, McCurdy's not really done much since he's came to Hibs he's come out a few times and said he needs to do more and things like that maybe this is the half to show it Four for two went up now against Albion Rovers. Ben Armour with a goal in 68 minutes. An equaliser in the Championship. Morton won. Inverness Cali Thistle won. Grant Gillespie from the penalty Hips spot. Are in. Kurevich into minutes. the box. Oh, Casey comes across, defends it really well. It's a free kick given to Motherwell now. The Hibs fans are a little bit restless. They're not overly happy with Graham Granger. The, he's let quite a few ch tackles go, not just against... Motherwell players, but also against Hibs. There's been quite a few that you thought perhaps he should have blown, but he's letting it go. But obviously Hibs are trying desperately to get back into this game, and they're a little bit frustrated with some of the decisions of the referee. Bonnie grows one, Sonar nil, Kier Magaki with a goal on 71. It's to go back into League One just to give you the update there. So Alloa nil, Airdrie one, Clyde nil, Falkirk nil, Dunfermline nil, Kelty Hearts nil, FC Edinburgh nil, Montrose one, Queen of the South one, Peter Head nil in League Two. As I said, Bonnie grows one, Stranraer nil, Dumbarton one, Stenhouse Muir nil, East oh. Fife nil, oh. Annan nil, Elgin nil, Stirling Albion three, four for two, Albion Rovers one. You know, another chance for oh, another great chance for, certainly for Hearts. Yeah, great. I mean, the goalkeeper again. It's Lauren Shankman inside the box. Turns himself into a, a shooting position. Gets the shot in. But again, big Sam Walker is up to it. He's kept, he's kept uh, command in this game. I think it's Humphreys. He's just come on the part out the right-hand side. Absolutely skins his man and cuts it back. How's David Watson done for Kamarnock today in the middle of the pitch, Jack? I was really impressed with him, 18-year-old, when I watched him a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, he's steady, he's steady. And I think Michael touched on this earlier on. For me, and, and this game could still go either way, let's, let's say that, but uh, I think Michael's point about the middle of the park, Kamarnock look um, uh, much more powerful, much more in possession and control of the game than Hearts do in that area. And young Watson... Yeah, he, 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 he was given the nod to stay in the team today. There's a free kick, exactly, to come on right inside the box. Oh, it's hit the side netting! In at the far post to get away with that one and do hearts. So this game is it's just end-to-end -end stuff. It's brilliant. We've played 68 minutes. It's still killing two hearts one. A couple of goals in League One. FC Edmund have equalised at home to Montrose. Ryan Shanley on 69 minutes. One apiece there. Also one apiece. Perhaps a bit of a shock here. Queen of the South one. Oh, Peter Head one. Bar. Jason Brown in 69 minutes. Alan? Ah, he's not meant that. Behitch is on the left-hand side. He's just trying to clip the ball in. Fletcher makes a good run. BH gets across all wrong, but it just bounces off the top of the bar and a way out for a bike kick. What's happening at uh, Can you get a check? Yep, yeah. on you go, Derek. Yeah, it was Kelly just inside. The, I didn't think so. Yeah, it's no penalty. I didn't think he, he went down far too easily. Uh, for me, it was Kelly inside the box. I don't think there was much contact. So, yeah, that's the VR check. Over, no penalty kick. Well, that, was a nice, that was a nice quick one. Willie, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing, Kenny. There's nothing happening here. <laughs> it, 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 honestly, it, it, it's, it's like watching paint dry. Uh, you know, Aberdeen have been very, very poor uh, in the second half. They've not created any opportunities whatsoever. Uh, St. Johnson are well organised. Uh, they're disciplined. They've went to a 4 4 1 now. Um, and Aberdeen are really struggling to find any creativity whatsoever, any little opening. You know, for plenty of the ball, but they haven't been using it well. And as far as St. Johnson are concerned, well, they've had no uh, opportunity really to go forward in the second half. But they're, they're making it difficult for Aberdeen, and Aberdeen certainly haven't been showing the sparkle they, they, they did against Hearts last week or two weeks ago. Well, how is that fixture? such a poor fixture it never produces <laughs> and it, it does it, it very rarely I mean, does you're uh, right Derek yeah it's always a still hope though still hope still, hope. Hope. <laughs> still a bad time yeah. to go <laughs> <laughs> well, what about the, the way support will they get a bit agitated that they've not seen more from their team or they're just quite happy it's another looking like three yeah. points in the bag I, I think they're quite happy um, you, you know that, that they're not making any real noise of frustration um, I think they're quite content that they feel as though eventually Aberdeen will uh, perhaps uh, get the second goal and give them a little bit to cheer about in the second half they certainly haven't had much but they're content with the scoreline that's for sure 
What about Dundee United, oh. Alan? You, you, you said you were interested to see how they set up today. We knew it was a big, big task for them to get something from the game at Ibrox. Have you seen anything there for the United away support that'll give them some sort of hope, perhaps the way they've set up, the attitude, the desire? Oh, the team shaping that's been very good, Kenny, but they've offered nothing going forward, really, apart from that poor effort. Well, they should have hit it in the first half. It's really been about it. Behitch just hit the bar from an attempted cross. But, you know, it's all been all Rangers. And this isn't this game here today won't define their season. It certainly doesn't help. But, you know, it's the coming weeks where they've got to really step, step up and play. Just to say, Thomas to the byline. Tavernier, great save by the keeper. Looks like a push on Morelos as well. At the back post, I'm sure it'll be checked. Morelos isn't happy at all. But, you know, United, they are going to have to improve in, in the next few weeks. They really have the game next week against the Bernian and then the subsequent games before the splat against Motherwell and Livingston, they need to win more points than their... Than their you know, I think they'll have to take maybe seven out of that, out that nine points to try and stand any chance to stay, there, stay in this league. I've only seen the Morelos incident once. It looked very theatrical, yeah. shall we say, the way it went down, but whether there was enough contact to, to do that or not, I'm not sure, but we've not seen it back again. I think it was Tillman chasing the referee, wanting the penalty, but maybe after his hat-trick, but... We need to see it again, but on first I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. What about Hearts, Chick uh, Rugby Park? You mentioned that half chance there for the home side, but is it a lot of pressure now from Robbie Nielsen's team? It is, but that that Kilmarnock always seem capable of just getting something on the break. You know, they're under the cosh. No doubt about that. In fact, a couple of times I've just kicked for touch. I think I was watching. Oh, here's a bit. Oh, here's a oh, goalkeeper. Is he outside the box? The Hearts goalkeeper replacement. Remember Ross Stewart. Claims that he was outside the box picking up that ball. Rory, have a look at that, my friend. And certainly the, the Kilmarnock fans round about that area of the park insisted he was out the box. You hear the reaction. The referee says, no, he didn't come out the box and play. It rages on, still 2-1, Kelly. Yeah, hopefully get another look at it when it comes back round again to see whether it was or it wasn't. Um, certainly keep me busy today anyway. Yeah, you might be, you might be a while because play has gone on since then. So oh, good tack, good save. Morelos, right foot shot, really good save. Berrigiti diving down to his right hand side corner to Rangers, still 2 0. Stennis Muir equalised away at Dumbarton. Gavin Riley on 71 minutes, what, 15, 20 minutes to go oh, in the games this afternoon? Five. It's five at Dens. It's Lyle Cameron again, the 20 year old midfielder. He's got 11 goals this season. What a tally for the youngster. He swept it in after Luke McCown found him at the bottom right hand corner. Dundee five, Hamilton Ackies nil. Wow, what a performance. Hang on, Kenny. Yeah. We may have, we may, Kenny, yep. we may, the referee is getting a word in his ear about this incident with the referee, uh, where the goalkeeper seems to go oh, to the here's box. A better angle here, Oh, check. no, he's been told to play on. Derek McInnes is going bonkers down there. It has been for weeks now with VAR, I think it's fair to say he's not been at all happy, has uh, the command at Manager Road. Have you had a chance to have a look at that yet? We've got a slightly that. better angle there. Uh, I mean, he puts his gloves on the ball, and some of his gloves are certainly outside the box. It's incredibly difficult to tell whether the full ball is outside the box. I mean, my initial instinct is no, um, it, it's not, and he's OK. Um, but, uh, again, it's like I said, it's incredibly difficult to tell with the... With the angles I've got, but I don't think it was uh, an offence here. I think he was okay. Hibs one, Motherwell two, come on at two, Hearts one, Rangers two, Dundee United nil, St Johnson nil, Aberdeen one, St Mirren three, Livingston nil in at the Championship this afternoon. Cove Rangers nil, Party Thistle four, Dundee five, Hamilton Ackies nil, Morton one, Inverness Cali Thistle one, Wraith Rovers two, Queen's Park nil. In League one, Alloa nil, Airdrie one, Clyde nil, Falkirk nil, the leaders down Fairman being held at home to Kelty Hearts nil nil there. SC Embra 1, Montrose 1, Queen of the South 1, Peter Head 1, and in League 2, uh, Bonnery Groves 1, Stranraer 0, Dumbarton 1, Senos Muir 1, East Fife 0, Annan 0, Elgin City 0, Stirling Albion 3, 4 for 2, Albion Rovers 1, and in England a full time, Manchester City 4, Liverpool 1, in the 3 o'clock kickoffs, Arsenal 3, Leeds 0, Bournemouth 1, Fulham 1, Brighton 2, Brentford 3, Three, Crystal Palace one, Leicester City one, oh. Nottingham Forest one, Wolves nil. Five thirty kickoff, Chelsea against Aston Villa. 
Chance for Rangers again. Kent to the byline, hangs up the back post. Barisic is coming in, knocks it back across. Sakala tries to knock it in the net, just over the top of his head. 74 minutes on the clock. Rangers 2, Dundee United 0. I'm watching that, Alan. I'm going, who's that with the blonde hair running in at the back <laughs> stick? I, I could not work it out. And then I realised he's got a big bandage on <laughs> his head, but big chance for him, but not a great execution of the header, you must say. And for Alan McGregor, Alan, we touched on it before the game, he got an award, um, a presentation from John Gregg, pre-match, his 500th uh, game for Rangers this afternoon. Has he had much to do? Nothing really to do. Um, you know, it's been a very comfortable afternoon for him and, you know, I think he's a very shy guy and I don't know if he'll do any interviews after. I think he should, it would be great because it's some achievement to play 500 games for Rangers, it really is. Only one of 16 men ever to do it, so... Um, it's been a comfortable afternoon. You can actually put his top away back in the cupboard for next week. Yeah, there was some chat during the week that if Rangers won this afternoon that he would uh, do some media post-match, we shall see. Alan, just kind of from a, a, an agent's point of view, you know... Oh, wowee! Unbelievable! Lyle Cameron hat-trick! <laughs> it's a brilliant header, a really clever header. Luke Hannon found him about eight yards out and instead of trying to smash it with his foot he just waited on it, got under it and flicked it over, Ryan filled him with his head what a day for the 20 year old Lyle Cameron, Dundee I think it's six now, Hamilton Aki's now yeah, absolutely rampant at that after a fantastic weekend uh, for Hamilton Ackies uh, last weekend, although the celebrations uh, did seem to drag on a bit. Uh, another goal, Bournemouth 2, Fulham oh. 1, Dominic Solanke on 79. Leeds United have pulled a goal back, 3-1 uh, oh. now. Arsenal lead them, uh, Christensen in 76 minutes. Big chance here, big chance here on the break for St Johnson. Stevie May burst down. Uh, the right hand side, they touch the ball back to uh, Halberg, who really should do much better. You know, he's, he's, he's not marked, he's clear, he kind of heads the ball down. It's an easy take for uh, Roos and goal, but if he gets some, some power behind that, if he gets good direction, then could have easily ended up as equaliser. But unfortunately, for St Johnson, the first opportunity of the second half goes for St Johnson in the break, but they don't take it. So let's think about it. Kenny, to, are you talking yeah. about the Ackies? Kenny, are you talking about the Ackies? Yeah, the, celeb the celebration seemed to drag on a bit, didn't they? Uh, I are think, you the, I think, the, other, well, how, I think how, the other issue is probably suspensions and injuries, Kenny. They've got five players out yeah, today they're, they're, who would normally be playing, so they're really struggling. But the good thing for them, I suppose, if you're looking for some sort of positive, is that they've got two games in hand over Cove, who are also in absolute freefall. Sorry to interrupt, Should Kenny. Spiders afternoon is getting out. worse and worse. Uh, Charlie yep. Fox has just been sent off. It's an off-the-ball incident. We were obviously following the action up the other end, more towards the old McDermott stand. And then the referee, Grant Irvin, uh, blows his whistle and heads back into the, the, the other side of the pitch. And you can see Sam Stanton still down on the deck as Charlie Fox has just departed play right now. There, there's booze obviously ringing around um, Kirkcaldy, around Starts Park. We, we're unsure, obviously, what happened. Something has happened off the ball, but it's all just going very, very wrong for Owen Coyle's side this afternoon. It does remain at Starks Park, Rafe Rovers 2, 10 man Queen's Park nil. Yeah, I was saying, Derek, brilliant celebrations, great for the yeah. club last weekend, but I, I, and there's some great video cover. I think I saw John uh, Rankin saying that some of the players I think had basically turned up uh, on the uh -huh. Monday, still in their kits. So I say maybe they had gone a bit long, but yeah, I suppose it's hard to get that balance, isn't it? Let the players go out and celebrate, try and take the confidence in that cup win, but keep them it's focused great. on the job in hand. Yeah, I, I didn't know that then. I've just seen that they turned up <laughs> their kit the next he morning. Having, he was having, he was having, yeah, it, he was having a light-hearted joke about it. I think he was suggesting some of the... I hope so, because that, cause that would be taking it a little bit too far, to be honest with you. When, uh, you know, because their main aim, main aim is, you know, to stay in that division, you know. So uh, I thought, yeah, you can have a little bit of get-together after the game, couple of hours with the players then get yourself home, but I didn't know that. It's so tight, Derek. Oh, just... It's so tight at the bottom, isn't it? Because I brought oh. that great win last night. They played 30 games, 31 points. Cove Rangers, 31 games, yeah. 26 points. Hamilton Ackies have got yeah. two games in hand on Cove and are just a point behind, all to play for. Yeah. And livelihoods at stake, Kenny, if they drop a division again, you know, which... Uh... I mean, that, it looks as if it could, well, certainly could happen, so you, you just wonder that the contracts of the players and livelihoods, you know, that they're, they're at risk as well. So, yeah, I, but what I was trying to get, yeah, you have a spend two or three hours with the boys after the game, back to the club, then that's it, back to the nitty-gritty, you know, uh, and focusing on 
you know, obviously this game today up at Dens Park, but uh, yeah, it's not too, it doesn't look too good at the moment anyway. No, no, no celebrations for the away side, certainly this afternoon through there in Paisley. Oh. Derek, I mean, it's been, seems been very, very flat from Davy Martindale's team. Yeah, I was really surprised. Uh, not not how flat. I just I was surprised that they were outfought, uh, outplayed. Uh, they, uh, St. Mern showed a real physicality. Uh, they've made a few changes in the second half. They've had more of the ball, but I just think it's a a, a, like a game that in the second half that St. Mern have just contained them. They've just managed the game, and they're looking to if they can nick a fourth, they'll be happy with that. But uh, I think they know the game's done and dusted. We're in 67th, 67th minute. It'll be better up, than so, my uh, game, Derek. The game's it'll, dead be be buried. it'll be better than my game, Derek. That's for sure. In That's the second some time. delay if you're only Six, at 67 minutes. 67 it's minutes. minutes. What a delay that is. That's incredible. Yeah, well, can it be 67? No, it's no. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a delay on his leg. can't even ask for a I did check. It's, it's terrible when you get older, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought no, I thought it's not. I'm I'm like as old as I possibly can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Senna Smith have gone 2 1 up away at Dumbarton. Thomas Orr on 78 minutes. What's happening through there at Rugby Park Trick? <laughs> years ahead oh, of uh, two, two questions <laughs> in, in quick succession. Give them a break. <laughs> oh, a lot to go. It's game setting match here at Easter Road. Kevin Van Veen. He bangs it into the back of the net from a free kick. He's on the inside left channel, perfectly placed for the right footer, and he sticks it into the far corner, low past David Marshall. 3 1 to Motherwell. What a scoreline oh, for mistake. Motherwell there, yep. Snodgrass caught in possession. It's midway inside his own half. Robbed by the ball. David Watson goes forward. He's got a chance to put this beyond their uh, hearts. But uh, the goalkeeper makes a good save. Does Ross Stewart. Maybe the second attempt. He's thrown it a little bit. Then got on it. And Hearts go out of jail a little bit there. They're chilling 2-1. And just to be accurate, we'll play it 82 minutes and 14 seconds here at <laughs> Show Rocky off. Park. Uh, Wolves have equalised uh, late on away at Nottingham Forest. Daniel Podence on 83 minutes. Uh, very impressive by the sounds of it, Michael, from the wayside through the Easter Road this afternoon. I mean, look, goals are the, the biggest contributing factor to the perception of everything. The performance level has been not bad for Motherwell, absolutely. But scoring three goals is the defining uh, feature from the game. It's uh, a couple of free kicks, obviously, and uh, and a penalty kick. So it's all you know set pieces that uh, Motherwell have scored from, and um, they have been good. You know, even you know barring for the the, the goal, three goals here at Easter Road, the performance that has been pretty good. Hibs are into the box here. McCurdy it's deflected behind for a, a corner kick. Um, aye, at two one there. Obviously, I said before. Lee Johnson made the substitutions. They were trying to push and probe to get themselves back level pegging. They've uh, they've suffered a, a real um, a real uh, sucker punch there from uh, from Motherwell to go three one behind. And at this stage, I can't see how they're going to get themselves back into it. And the far park side, it continues to be onwards and upwards for them uh, since Stuart Kettlewell's coming. Keeps Livingston St. Mung breathing down the necks. The Hibs as well. So been a poor little spell for Hibs, but Motherwell at home, you'd expect them to get a point at the very minimum. Yeah, it's, it's tight, it's tight in the, in the battle for the places in the top six. Queen of the South oh. have gone back in front, oh, oh. Peter Head, Lee Conley in 84 minutes. Yes, Derek? It's Willie. Willie, sorry, Willie. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'd lost you. It was Aberdeen in a break. <laughs> I've been lost for a long time. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you just I've made the Fergie, Fergie just got a fright there. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan Duncan, Ryan Duncan coming in from uh, the right hand side uh, on his left foot. And he flashes one just by the far post. Aberdeen's first effort in goal. Didn't hit the target, but it looked dangerous. That's why I roared out, Kenny. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, at least it's some action there. It's been a poor game, as Willie said, but the Aberdeen fans won't care too much. They are ahead, thanks to Remy Matthews' own goal on 30 minutes that after Andy Considine had been sent off in the sixth minute. Given Dennett McInnes and Kamarnik's last two home games conceding later stages of the game with one goal in it, you just wonder whether nerves will begin to creep in psychologically, whether they'll get deeper and deeper or whether they can push and try and get another goal to seal the deal. 
Big goal in the championship. Uh, David Carson on 88 minutes. Just put Inverness, Cali Thistle back in front. They lead Morton by two goals to one. Granite Xhaka has wrapped things up for Arsenal at home to Leeds United. Arsenal four, Leeds United one in There's that a chance game. for Rangers. It's four versus two. Sakala and Kent. Ah, Sakala knocks Kent too wide for me. He's still got an opportunity. He's still on it. Cuts back inside on his... Oh, blocked in the end. Wasted opportunity, poor choice of pass from Sakala. Overhits it in a 4v2 situation. Yeah, it kills all the momentum out of the attack, doesn't it, Alan? Yeah, totally. Just picks the wrong pass. Just drive at the... They've only got two defenders, Rory. He's got to drive at one of them and then pick the, the pass out. Yeah. Overhits it. Alan, what Kenny do you make of the goal yep. at the ends as well? Yep. While I was away doing my TV duties, uh, Dundee, unsurprisingly, have made it 7-0. Kwame Thomas, wow. the striker, number nine coming on, they popped up at the back post and headed past Ryan Fulton 7-0, the substitute making it 7 Alan, what do you make of Michael's comments there in regards to the Hearts midfield? I, I, I said that I agree with Michael totally you know, they don't think there's enough energy in there, Snodgrass is a magnificent passer of the ball, now being blessed with pace so if you're going to play him and get him on the ball you need legs around him and they don't have it I'm afraid Kermit Soglu's not they that man Alan. Grant's not the man, there's a few Yeah, but somebody jumped in there. Say, Alan, it, it, yeah, no, I'm just going to, for Alan's information, just to say, I mean, for me, the game has passed, uh, passed Robert Snodgrass by. I know his ability, but he's just not got himself into this game at all. He's been caught in possession, as, you, as Alan says. He does lack pace. Uh, I just think the hearts in the middle of the park today have been overrun by Kamarnik by their energy uh, and, the, and enthusiasm as well. There's another couple of changes now, into they're getting made for Kelly. They're going to bring on Power and Ash Taylor. So um, that gives them a bit of energy in the middle of the park and at the back. New energy for them. I think it's Danny Armstrong, one of the players who's coming off. He's been terrific. Actually, he's been fired with the uh, cramp for the last couple of minutes. So uh, that's the wise thing to do. Check, so they'll think, just be solid for the last. I think the three at Pataudry was, I think Aberdeen Steve was Ramadani, Clarkson, and Shinny. You know, they're all action in about them. And, and Hearts had Barry Mackay, Kermit Soglu, and Snodgrass. That's never going to, that's a mismatch for me. You know, with terms of energy, running about, closing people down. Um, that, area, that area of the park has gone from a huge asset to Hearts in regards to with Beningame oh. and Devlin in the middle of the park to now sort of fumbling around trying to find something to work. Obviously, Beningame has been injured. Devlin, I think, personally has regressed. Looked as if he was going to really, you know, become an important player for Hearts. I think he's regressed. And Snodgrass has come in. Everybody recognises the asset that... Uh, he is, if he has the right players around him. But Chick's just hit the nail on the head. The problem is, in a lot of games, if he doesn't have the proper players around him, especially away from home, the game will just bypass, bypass. And you've got a lot of players in the middle of the park that play in the top flight, full of energy. They're not got, you know, they couldn't lace Robert Snodgrass's boots in terms of ability, but they're just going to run over the top of him. When he doesn't have the support in there, there's not a great deal he's going to be able to do. Partick Thistle have a fifth away at Cove Rangers. Danny Mullen on 90 minutes. Annan looked to have grabbed a late winner away at East Fife. East Fife nil. Annan won. Aidan Smith on 90 minutes. How long to go there at Rugby Park trip? Because it seems with that man advantage, they've really done very little with it, Hart. Derek, this is how it's done. We've played 88 minutes and 29 <laughs> seconds. However, oh, <laughs> however yeah. there will oh, be, no. I think, a fair old time added on. Another big chance for St. Johnson. This has been, um, you know, back again to Aberdeen, away from home, the form that they've showed in the we've second got, half. We've got, it looks sorry, as we've got a possible penalty check here, Wally. Sorry. OK. To cut no you for a handball in the box. The game has been stopped. The referee, Don Robertson, is telling over the players that it's now come on the board. Possible penalty check. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Um, I, I didn't see it, I'm being brutally honest. Never seen anything at all, so... Rory, if you can help us out here. Yeah, we're just getting... There was, didn't seem to be many people shouting for it either, because you would have noticed, but... Uh, it's quite often the way with these. It was the same at Kamarnik a couple of weeks ago when Vassell scored the first, and the full place just went to a standstill because nobody knew. Um, just he's still got, We're still getting images of Don Robertson with his hand at his ear, checking possible penalty. We've not actually seen visions of it, but there's been, <laughs> there's been a good few of these today. It's yeah, slow been, today, hasn't it? Busy the night. Yeah, Var, Var's been slow. Uh, Cove Rangers nil, part of this or five, full-time score. Bonnery grows one, Sunrar nil, also a full-time. Is that a... Is so that, that claims goal straight yeah. away. Is it a, a, is he headed on a Yina's arm? 
I, I don't know. It just they both jump for the ball. It looks like it gets kind of sandwiched in the middle of the two of them. But again, I've seen one angle of it once. Um, so I would really need to see nah, it again. That's play on. Wait, left three is with play on. So no penalty. Right, here penalty just, over. just getting back to that chance because I think it's an important one again yep. for St. Johnson. Um, Jamie Murphy come on as a sub down the left hand side, cuts it back for Halbert. And he's only, what, maybe about eight yards out. And he should be sweeping it. If he makes contact with his left foot, oh. it ends up in the back of the net. He simply doesn't make contact with it. It was a huge opportunity for the home side to have done really well in the second half. But it looks as though they're going to go out losers. I bet you Tillman's got it. Alan McGregor's just been named man of the match. <laughs> Kenny, <laughs> yeah, just the, 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 the fourth official's put the board up here. We're going to have seven minutes of time added on so what, 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 what did this. we have check we had the check for the sending off was there much more above so, that so I complained well, I, I observed that there was the two injuries in the first half the players were down for a long time they only added on three minutes we've certainly had a, I mean Hearts have had five substitutions by themselves uh, Kilmarnock have had four so there's all these substitutions and we have had stoppages as well but I mean I wow. think and, and Kilmarnock have certainly been guilty of wasting time. So, so I, I think it's good when, when they show a bit of bottle, as long as you do it consistently, uh, you know, the, the, the realistic time that's been played in the football match. Because did I say Hearts, Kilmarnock have been guilty of time wasting, no doubt about that. And I, I think that sometimes comes back to haunt you and bite you in the backside. There's a handball. No, it's not. Play on, says the referee. So seven minutes. We're a couple of minutes into that now, but Hearts have still got time to salvage something here. Four you added minutes at Ibrox. You can't believe this. St. Johnson are pinning Aberdeen back. Aberdeen are hanging on, clinging on. They're playing lovely football. Jimmy Murphy's made a big difference. They're throwing men forward. They might leave themselves a little bit to uh, spare at the back, uh, and Aberdeen might take advantage of it. But uh, it's been a poor, poor second half for the Dons, and St. Johnson have definitely been the better side, even though they've only got 10 men. But on the break, no, it's over hit and it goes out. But it's been a good performance from St. Johnson's second half and Aberdeen very poor. Brighton have equalised later on. Alexis Rory. McAllister, 3-3 three, three, in that game. Cove Rangers nil, part of 5. Yes, Michael. Yeah, can I ask you a no, oh, Derek, sorry, Derek. Here, uh, Kenny. Can I ask you a question? What would be kind of, a strong part of Livingston's game over the, the last number of years? What, what would you think? What you, you think about a living side? What are they very good at? Hard work, closing people down, teamwork, Fergie for me. Having set plays, would you say set, set, set plays are good? We used to have long They've throw been absolutely be woeful. From... Biscuits, they've been woeful today. They, see the set plays? They're actually embarrassing. They're men, they've, they've had I, umpteen opportunities in the second half, but their delivery has been absolutely shocking. So it has. I, I wasn't doing it, David, there, David Martindale. Just turning his back, shaking his head. I can't believe how poor it's been. Because you look at the boy, you look at Guthrie. Obviously, they've got Nubley, they've got Fitzwater going up there. The Lucas as well. You know, they've got that height, that physicality. But the delivery's got to be right, and it's been absolutely way off. And you contrast Shocking. that to St. Martin, their wide men, and the quality of delivery into the box. Even I if think Sinny's not... off. He's got a second yellow, and he's off. Graham Sinny has been shown a second yellow. He dives uh, into the tackle. Uh, it's, it, it, there's no doubt about me uh, w w in my book it's rash it's out of control there's no need for it actually and he gets that second yellow card and he's been invited to take uh, a, a, an early bath uh, Graham Shinney captain has been ordered off it's been going to four minutes added on so all even here and the momentum's with St Johnson yeah Graham Shinney would argue till he's blown the face about anything I think to a referee but the fact he just walks away will he suggest that you're Assumptions are absolutely correct, yeah. and you, you're, you're absolutely spot on. That's a, that's a stonewall yellow card. I don't know what his first one was for, but that was certainly a yellow card. His first one Full was for time yep. at Dens Park, Dundee 7, Hamilton Aki's nil, and hat trick hero Lyle Cameron has just fulfilled his mission of finding the match ball which had gone into the crowd. He's got it in his hands now, the 20 year old midfielder, Dundee 7, Hamilton Aki's nil. First one was for Verbos. Full time at Starks Park, Wraith Rovers 2, Queen's Park 0. Queen's Park lead at the top of the championship, cut down to one point. 
Yeah, what a, what a result for the Den Park side today. Uh, Queen of the South 2, Peterhead 1, a full-time scoreline. Uh, Crystal Palace have gone 2 and up late on, 94th minute uh, at home to Leicester City. Uh, Alwyn 0, Airdrie 1, a full-time. Bournemouth 2, Fulham 1, that's also a full-time scoreline. Just confirming the D7, Hamilton 0, yes. Free kick for Hearts outside the box. Snodgrass is on it. The box is absolutely packed with players. It's been like the Alamo for Kamarnock in the last couple of minutes. Attack after attack from Hearts. Snodgrass with the free kicks. It puts it top of the goalkeeper. Oh, he's punched it. Why did he just catch that? But the goalkeeper's punched that away and Hearts have a throw in. Yeah, Hearts desperately in need of a late, late goal yeah. there. But Czech's been telling us they're not really been making the most of that advantage after the sending off uh, for the home side. Rodney so McKenzie. Time at Ibrox, Alan McGregor gets his clean sheet on his 500th appearance. Rangers 2, Dundee United 0. Yeah, we may hear from uh, the Rangers goalkeeper later in the programme. He was presented with a, a gift uh, before the game from Rangers legend. Uh, John Gregg in that match there. So, still the player. What sort of time you got left there at uh, Moderna Park, Willie? You're talking maybe three minutes, I think. Okay, yeah. Maybe two and a half. Yeah, two and a half now, possibly. But disappointing, despite the scoreline from the Dons this afternoon. Second Dons performance. Yeah. yeah, well, six minutes. You know, after six minutes of playing against ten men and. Uh, they, they get to, they get the goal in 30 minutes and uh, they've had plenty of possession but no really any opportunities after that and second half very poor indeed very poor uh, full time score in Arsenal 4 Leeds United 1 it's now a full time Crystal Palace 2 Leicester City 1 uh, FC Edinburgh 1 Montrose 1 that's also a full time scoreline in League 1 the leaders in Fairman held at home to Kelty Hearts 0-0 nil -nil in that game there Alan confirming full time scoreline uh, at Ibrox, I've just seen Jim Goodwin going round shaking hands with his players and clapping the away support there at Ibrox, but they were, were really outplayed by the home side in that game. Welcome back to listeners on Medium Wave who've been enjoying that game at Ibrox. Alan McGregor's 500th uh, for Rangers, a goalkeeper having a clean sheet this afternoon. Malik Tillman with a double there, 38 and 55 Oof. minutes still the play on through there at Rugby Park it's game oh, over here at Easter Snodgrass Road Snodgrass has given the ball Snodgrass has given the ball away inside the Kamara area Kamara on the break now take it I'm sure they'll just run this into the corner leading 2-1 oh one. it's off well the bar into it's off the bar what a magnificent run down the right hand side the cross in and the header for St Johnson came off the bar they've been brilliant they've pinned Aberdeen back they're celebrating Aberdeen, they can celebrate for the three points. That's all they can celebrate because that was a poor performance that they put in, particularly in the second half. It finishes here, a very de dejected uh, St. Johnson, putting in a great second half performance. So unlucky not to take something from the game. Just They're nil, St. Johnson, uh, Aberdeen won. And it's celebrations for Kilmarnock as well. They have beaten Hearts here at Rugby Park by two goals to one. Shankman put Hearts ahead, but uh, an Armstrong penalty, a Dodge goal at half-time. A Rory McKenzie red card, killer with ten men, were on the rack in the second half, but the celebrations rattle around this ground, apart from that big heart support away to my left who have seen disappointment and another defeat for the team in third place in the league. But joy for Kilmarnock, that's a massive three points for them. They've won this match by two goals to one. Yes, Trick said a huge scoreline for Derek McKinnis' side. We'll hear from both managers there. Uh, I remind you, we're on until seven o'clock this evening. Lots to come for you. We'll get reactions from some of the fans. Some of the fans have been through at that game at uh, Rugby Park this afternoon. Also, we'll hear from some Motherwell fans. What an away day for them, winning through at Easter Road. It's been a dramatic afternoon, Rory. Yeah, it has indeed. Um, plenty of incidents, um, plenty of goals, red cards, penalties. You, you see it happened. Um, but I think in terms of performances, Motherwell and St Mirren stand out to me. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, and Derek McInnes maybe limped over the line towards the end, but three points are all that matter because they deserve three points from at least one of the last two games. So huge wins. Yeah, all the reaction to come on Sports and we're with you right through until 7 o'clock. We're back after the BBC Radio Scotland News at 5 o'clock. On digital radio, FM, your smart speaker, and on BBC Sound.